Yeah, right. right. Here we go right. then. So, City of Thieves. Are you brave enough to walk the dangerous dark alleyways of Port Blacksand? No. No. Here we go then. Right. To the beginning. Ooh. Quite an intimidating picture on the inside of the front cover there, look. Oh, hello. That looks scary. Big skull headed. Uh, do Oh, first, hello, Alex. And uh, second, no, I don't think so. I mean, maybe down the line we'll come across some that revisit storylines or revisit areas, but for the moment they seem to be independent adventures each time. Um, they might, I'd have to have a look online. They might be part of a shared universe or something. Right, here we go then. How will you start your adventure? The book you hold in your hands is a gateway to another world. A world of dark magic, terrifying monsters, brooding castles, treacherous dungeons, and untold danger. Where a noble ah. few defend against the myriad schemes of the forces of evil. Welcome to the world of fighting fantasy. You are about to embark upon a thrilling fantasy adventure in which you are the hero. You decide which route to take, which dangers to risk, and which creatures to fight. But be warned... It will also be you who has to live or die by the consequences of your actions. It will be you who has to die by the consequences of your actions in our experience so far to date. True story. Um, so here we go. For, if you played Fighting Fantasy before, you'll realise that to have any chance of success, you'll need to discover your hero's attributes. So follow the instructions on page 208. Here we go. Uh, yes, it is indeed skill, stamina and luck. So, skill, as before, roll 1d6, add 6 to it. Oh, 4. 4, that's nice. 6 plus 4 um, is 10. See, I've got the dice cam going for me over here, but we, we've we not set you up with a dice cam yet. So we'll, we'll ha have to just go on the honour system and believe Andy's dice rolls. But if we're ever in doubt, we can get chat to do it for us now. That's true. Uh, on to stamina, then you roll t both dice and add 12 to this one. Oh, that's not so good. Five. Five plus twelve, seventeen. That could have been a lot better. Mm. Uh, and then for your luck, it's a single die and add six. Let's let chat do that for me. All right, so, so what did chat? First one in chat to exclamation D6 for Andy. Give me a good luck. Let's see who's the fastest fingers. Oh, Javi's on it. Look at that. That's five. a five. Good work. Very good. Well done. Well done, Harry. Lack of eleven. I've got. Ne I'm nearly as lucky as I am. Staminary. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so skill is your swordsmanship and fighting expertise. Uh, stamina, strength, and luck is how lucky you are. Funnily enough, surprisingly enough. Um, keep your eraser handy. It says it may change constantly during the adventure. Uh, never rub out your initial score. Same as always, basically, my man. Cool beans. Um, when you're told to fight a creature, resolve. Da, 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 da. Roll two dice for the creature. Add its skill store. Roll two dice for yourself. Yeah, it's all it's all the standard rules. Uh, then you've got your luck. You can test your luck by rolling two dice, and if it's equal to or lesser than your luck score, you've been lucky. Uh, and you can use your luck in battles as standard. You may choose to test your luck. Uh, if you are lucky, subtract two points from the creature's stamina. Cool. That is good. And you have to use a luck point to do it, don't it? So it goes down yeah. as yeah. the more you use it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, drinking potion of skill will restore your skill. Stamina score change a lot. Uh, right. Ten meals. Provisions for ten meals. Ten meals. Yeah. What else are you going to give me? Uh, da, 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 da. When you eat a meal, it's four points to your stamina. You know, it never, still to this date, five books in, it's never pointed out. Like, do you have to wait for the book to instruct you you can eat a meal? Or, yeah. You know. Well, we had quite a few. Like, the first one, one we did, it instructed us, like, there's a few times it said, you can, you can stop and eat now. And the rest of the books, it just never mentioned it again. No, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? 
Yeah. Seems like a glaring omission. Especially since this is a reprint I've got here that was reprinted in uh, 2017. And it was first published in 1983. I'm still making him money even now. Yeah, sure. But you think they could add a sentence in saying you can yeah. eat a meal at any time or whatever. Uh, right, equipment and potion. Right, you've got a sword, leather armour, a shield and a backpack. Ooh, but you get to start a bonus magic potion. You can choose one of the following. A potion of skill, a potion of strength, or a potion of fortune. Which, pretty much, I'm sure you've done the maths, but the potion of skill restores your skill, the potion of strength restores your stamina, and the potion of fortune restores your luck. Skill. Oh. Potion of skill. Potion of skill. Okay, very good. Uh, and then all the usual bump about there only being one true way. You may have to replay it ten times to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> there right. can be only one. That's pretty straightforward then. Are you, um, this one's got a fun little thing, actually. I don't know uh, if, if you've seen this. So it says, if you haven't got any dice, you can flick the book and stop on a page, and there'll be a dice roll for you at the bottom of the page. You see that? Oh, nice. See that? Yeah. I see it. But we're, we're old school. We're going to roll some actual dice. Okay. Are you set? Oh, you need I'm a name set. for your adventurer. Any name suggestions in chat? Yeah, go on, chat. Need to name his adventurer. There's nine of you out there. Is there really nine people watching right now? Yeah. Check us out. Some kid nine in the people. back of the car is over the moon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just like dead straightforward. Just like, uh, oh, I've just rolled a, a nine. Oh, I've just rolled. Oh, nine again. Oh, there you go. There's a seven. I was about to think. Stabby McStab face. Okay. Any, any. <laughs> are we, are we have we any suggestion or any further suggestion? Oh. <laughs> any, any, uh, <laughs> uh, any other suggestions out there? Go for something more memorable. Javier is just trying to encourage you to play play the game, um, particularly aggressively. Go for a, an aggro approach. Andromedus of England. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, take owls. Right, I'll and... mash them up. Andromeda stab face. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right, let's get the uh, background done for you. Go on. You are an adventurer in a world of monsters and magic, living yeah. by the quickness of your wit and the skill of your sword. You earn your gold as a hired warrior, usually in the employ of rich nobles and barons on missions to dangerous or difficult for their own men. That's written badly. Slaying monsters and fearsome beasts in pursuit of some fabled treasure comes as second nature to you. Being an experienced and highly trained swordsman, you allow nothing to stand in the way of your quests. Your success on a mission is always assured and your reputation has spread throughout the lands. Housing Whenever it. you enter a village or town, the news of your arrival spreads through the citizens like wildfire, as few of them have ever met a dragon slayer before. A, yeah. Just chuck, just a little, just drop that in there. You're a dragon slayer. No previous mention of it. <laughs> so, so far, it sounds a lot like you know, real life. <laughs> <laughs> I am Andromedus Stabface of England. <laughs> One evening, after a long walk through the outlands, you arrive at Silverton which lies at the crossroads of the main trading routes in these parts. Great wooden wagons hauled by teams of oxen are often seen rumbling slowly through the town laden with herbs, spices, silks, metalware and exotic foods from far off lands. Oh, there's Ooh. the chair, the third member of the MOD. Over the years... <laughs> That's coming through my headphones so loud. <laughs> yeah. Is that loud for you guys and these chairs? Over the years, Silverton has prospered as a result of the rich merchants and traders stopping there en route to distant markets. Its wealth is quite apparent, with ornate buildings and richly dressed people aplenty. But as you enter the town gates, something strikes you as being not quite right. 
the people look nervous and on edge. Then you notice that all the windows on the buildings have great iron grills bolted over them and the doors have been strengthened too. Although you prefer your own company to that of others, you decide to stay in Silverton for the night to find out who or what is troubling the people. I feel like you can sense a business opportunity here. <laughs> As you walk down the main street, a single note from a bell rings out from a tall tower ahead. Then a man shouts almost desperately, Nightfall! Nightfall! Everyone indoors! You see people scurrying about with anxious faces and looking surprised when they see you. Across the street, you see a tavern with the words The Old Toad painted on its signboard. As you enter the tavern, a whisper runs through the locals as they recognise you. As they recognise you, some put down their mugs and stare. It's you are... England, UK Dice Masters 2017 champion. It's no, they go. It's Andromeda's stab face of England, the famous dragon slayer. You are somewhat surprised that none come over to you to hear your tales of adventure. Walking over to the counter, you ask the old innkeeper for a room and a hot tub, but he ignores you and shuffles over to the great <laughs> door. A hot tub? Yeah. I'll have a room with a hot tub, please. Do you know who I am? I mean, you know, we've got to be careful of hot tub, hot tub kind of talk around these twitchy parts. I think they have just put a thing out, though, saying it's all right to hot tub stream now. Oh, that is a relief. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, which one's this one? This is an Ian Livingston. Ian's taken us close to the line. <laughs> FBI. Um, where was I? He ignores you and shuffles over to the grey coat door, pushing six large iron bolts into place. Only then does he turn to you and say quietly, that will be five copper pieces for the room and one more for the tub. In advance, if you please. You reach into your leather pouch on your belt and toss the coins on the counter. He hands you an iron key... But at that very moment, there is a loud knocking at the door, followed by a voice shouting, Open up! Open up! This is Owen Carolith. This dude might be important. Owen? Yeah, Owen. All right, all right. The old innkeeper shuffles over to the oak door again and slides open the bolts. Then a fat and balding man dressed in rich scarlet robes bursts into the tavern. This is more accurately the Andy England character. Looking around frantically. How very dare you. He sees you and walks quickly in your direction, huffing and puffing. He is a man certainly not used to haste. You notice great beads of sweat on his forehead in the pale candlelight of the room. As he nears you, he calls out urgently, Stranger, I must speak with you. Please sit down, it is important that I speak with you. When he turns to the innkeeper to snap his fingers for food and drinks, you can see he is obviously of some standing in the town. But his face is full of anguish and sorrow. This is a big intro on this one. Man. Being curious, you decide to hear what the man has to say. He pulls out a chair for you to sit at the table, bidding you sit down, and the innkeeper bustles in with a tray laden with hot broth, roast goose, roast goose, roast goose, mm, goose, and mead. Ooh, it's a bit like hot vimto. <laughs> An exclusive for the MOD only fans. <laughs> How did you know, Javi? We've got that. That's on our five year plan. You may, have you been peeking in our Google Drive? <laughs> <laughs> the man in the scarlet robe sits opposite in silence, watching you as you feast, um, as though he was examining you for some purpose of his own. He's a perv, he's a, he's a feeder. <laughs> <laughs> now, boy, get in the hot tub. Yeah. And suck my cock. <laughs> Eat that goose. Oh, that's a greasy. That's a greasy goose. That one is. <laughs> Drink the mead. Go on, sap up. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> finally, as you push the plate away, the man leans forward and says in a low but anxious voice, "Stranger, I know of you and seek your aid." My name is Owen Caroliff and I am the mayor of Silverton. We are in great trouble and danger. We are living under a curse and it is I who must rid us of it. Ten days ago, two messengers of evil. <laughs> messengers of evil. Hello. <laughs> We're the messengers of evil. This is Tarquin thought... and this is Rupert. <laughs> yeah, I just thought we'd let you know that uh, we placed a curse on your town. Bye now. <laughs> Uh, their voices were cold, and each <laughs> and each word spoken ended with an unnerving hiss. 
They asked for me by name, and when I came to greet them, they wanted to take my beloved daughter, Morel, to stay with their master, Zanbar Bone. Zanbar Bone. <laughs> nice. It gets worse. No doubt that you will know he is the Night Prince. Of course, I refused their demand, and without another word, they turned and rode slowly out of the town, heads down and shoulders hunched. I knew then that beneath the cloaks were hidden the skeletal and soulless bodies of spirit walkers. Spirit stalkers, sorry. Zambar Bone always uses them as his messengers, as they will complete their mission or die in the attempt. And they did not die easily. Only a silver arrow through the heart will release those evil beings from their eternal silver. twilight existence. Yeah, no that down. That's relevant. Through heart needed to kill messengers. Who knows what it would take to kill Zanbar Bone? Maybe a gold arrow through the heart? Who knows? Anyway, that same night after the spirit stalkers left, our troubles began. The Night Prince was angry and determined to harm us. Six moon dogs came, each stronger than four men, each with razor sharp fangs. They stalked through the town, entering homes through the open windows and killing the poor people inside. Well, that'll be why they barred the windows off. In the morning, we counted 23 dead. So we barred our windows and bolted our doors. Yet each night the moon dogs returned and we were unable to sleep for fear that they might find a way into our homes. Some people are now talking of sending Morel to Zambar Bone. Those whimpering traitors, I should have them flogged. But what good would that do? There is what but one hope and that rests with you, stranger. There is a man called Nicodemus who... For reasons I'll never understand, lives in Port Black Sand. The place is commonly called the City of Thebes, as it's the home of every pirate, brigand, assassin, thief, Arr. and, and evildoer for hundreds of miles around. I think he lives there just to get some peace from the likes of us. He is a wise old wizard and is unlikely to come to much harm, even in Port Black Sand, for his magical powers are great. He alone is capable of defeating Zanbar Bone. He used to be a friend of mine many years ago. We need him, and I beg you, bring him to us. None here dares enter Port Black Sand. You will be well report rewarded if you help us, stranger. Take these 30 gold pieces. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. For your journey, and take this sword to use and keep. You've got a sword, mate. Yeah, all right, well. Two swords. Like that. Yeah. Uh, as Owen Carolyph rises, he pulls back his scarlet robe, revealing the finest broadsword you have ever seen. Ooh, nice. He hands it to you, and touching the edge of the blade, you are surprised to see a droplet of blood falls from your finger. Oops. Then you examine the marvellously ornate gilded serpents twining round the hilt. You have never wanted anything so badly in your life before. You stand up and hold out your right hand to Owen. He shakes it eagerly, saying, You must set off at first light of dawn. The moon dogs will be gone by then. I shall be forced to stay the night here also. So let's drink to our destiny, and may the gods be with us. Let's get fucked up. <laughs> no way that's cursed. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfectly normal sword. For the next hour, Owen talks about your coming journey, explaining in detail how to reach the port. Later, you gather up your backpack. <laughs> doesn't and give me any help. It doesn't. It's explained in detail to get there, but I'm not. It's not going to tell me, and it's going to go. Do you want to go north, west, or south? And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> By dawn, you are already awake and dressed, and determined to reach Port Black Sand quickly to find this man, Nicodemus. As you leave the tavern, a black cat scurries past your feet, and you almost trip. A bad omen, perhaps? Nah. Your adventure awaits. Now turn over. Wow, that took forever. That's that like was a, a long intro. Story in itself. Yeah. So right, I've just got go. to go and get a wizard and bring him back. I haven't got to bother with um, the boner dude. No, it doesn't seem to be that. Yeah, you need to get the dude to beat the dude. Easy. 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 The walk to Port Black Sands takes you west some 50 miles across plains and over hills. 
fortunately without any harmful encounters. Oh, okay. Eventually, you reach the coast and see the high city wall surrounding Port Black Sand and the cluster of buildings projecting into the sea like an ugly black mark. All right, you're there. <laughs> cool, easy. Yep. Uh, ships lie anchored in the harbour and smoke rises gently from the chimneys. It looks peaceful enough, and it is only when the wind changes that you smell the decay on the breeze that reminds you of the evil nature of this notorious place. Following the dusty road north along the coast to the city gates, you begin to notice fearful warnings. Skulls on wooden spikes, starving men in iron cages suspended from the city wall, and black flags everywhere. Oh As you approach the main gate, a chill runs down your spine, and you instinctively grip the hilt of your broadsword for reassurance. At the gate, you are confronted by a tall guard, wearing a black chainmail coat and an iron helmet. He steps forward, barring the way with his pike, saying, Who would enter Port Black Sands uninvited? State the nature of your business. Will you? Tell him you wish to be taken to Nicodemus. Tell him you wish to sell some stolen booty. Or attack him quickly with your sword. Some stolen booty. Booty. And this is a, 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 the, the entrance, because I just walked north to the entrance. Yeah, this is the entrance, and that's, that's your... Oh, hang on, let me angle that. That's your guard. That's your guard. Okay. Say, what are you up to? Where are you going? Do you, do you know who I am? You know who I am? I'm going to tell him to, to take me to the wizard, because that is could it? be like a really easy... <laughs> Finish. Tell him you wish to be taken to Nicodemus. Okay. Sell my booty. Nah, there this isn't go. real life. This is like a story. I'm going to keep it apart. You know? Real life story. Sorry. Sorry, real life. <laughs> Hello, Jordan. You alright, Matt? <laughs> That's on my OnlyFans. The MOD OnlyFans. MOD OnlyFans. Hot Dub Edition. <laughs> the guard replies that he will send for an escort to take you to Nicodemus. Happy days, escort. He reaches up to a small bell on the wall of the guardhouse and rings it three times. Ding, ding, ding. Almost immediately, two other guards come running out of the house and you are surprised when they each grab hold of one of your arms. The guard with the pike looks up at the sky and laughs, saying, So you want to see Nicodemus, do you? How would you like to see the inside of a dungeon cell instead? Guards, take this fool away to be shackled and throw away the key. Will you allow yourself to be taken, attempt to fight, or attempt to bribe? I don't attempt to bribe. They're just going to nick my money anyway, so um, I'll kick off. Uh, attempt to fight the guards. Turn to 69, dude. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Cause my broadsword's too bootalicious for you, babe. Okay. Just as the guards are about to lead you away, you try with all your might to pull your arms away from their grip. Roll two dice. I was going to say, am I? If the number you rolled is less than or equal to your skill, you succeed. If it's oh, greater okay. than your skill, you fail. And then there's a page to go to either way. Here we go. Eight with a skill of ten. It's a success. It's a success. Okay, three, five, five. Oh, yeah. I've left... I slay dragons, motherfucker. I'm not going to be bothered about two guards. I've left my own notebook upstairs like a numpty. Good work. I got all this, and I haven't brought my bloody notebook. Hang on. I'm sure one of the kids will have one. All right, guards. Hold on. Hold on a sec. I need to get my notebook. Yeah, there you go. Harrison's Here Lego go. one will do. Oh, I say Harrison's Lego. What is that even written in it? Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Put Pen. your swords away. Pen. <laughs> this is like a... Scooby Doo episode. It's like I'm hiding behind some kind of burger burger stall. <laughs> what do you want? Hot dogs or burgers? And they're like, Where's he gone? <laughs> right, here we go. Got a pen up there as well. Right. Right. Guessing right. there's a fight on the cards then. No. Uh, you turn on the two guards who are holding you, and before they realise what is happening, you smash their heads together, knocking them unconscious. You, you dash into the city. Page 74. Oh, after all that, I didn't need to... <laughs> I was, I was going to need it eventually. Right, 74. Here we go. 
Through the main gates, you see that the rubbish-filled streets of the port are narrow and cobbled. Old and decrepit buildings line them closely, with their upper stories overhanging men men menacingly. Menacingly. Would you like to go down West Key Street, North Market Street, or East Clock Street? I just got a sore back today, bruh. West Key Street, uh, East... North Market North, Street. North Market Street or East Clock. Clock Street. Let me go down the Key Street. Keys are good and shit like this, isn't it? Yeah, all right. 95. Yeah, although it's a harbour, isn't it? So is it taking you to... Oh, no, it's spelt Key, though. So, uh, uh, turn to 95. On the left side of the street, you see a large iron key hanging over the doorway of a small shop. A sign in the window reads, J.B. Raggings, Locksmith. <laughs> if you want to enter the shop, turn to 224. If you want to continue walking, turn to 300. I'd like to enter J.B. Raggings, please. Okay. Okay. 224. Uh, here we go. All right. Well, here we go. It, we can see we've got a picture of J. J. Raggings there. I'll do that to your camera there as well. Rug him off and then rough. Into the viewers. Yeah, he's like a little mad tinkerer type. Uh, sitting on a stool at the back of the shop is an old bespectacled dwarf. He is busy cutting a key on a cast iron treadle machine. Treed, treed, treadle machine? Treadle machine. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, which squeaks and grinds noisily. You cough to get his attention, but he does not look up from his work. <clears throat> Finally, the machine comes to a halt and the dwarf asks what you want. Uh, you can ask him if he has any skeleton keys for sale or ask him if he knows where Nicodemus lives. Logic would say I just want to ask where the dude lives. Yeah, but why would it give you the option for a skeleton key? That seems... It seems like likely that I might need a skeleton key in the near future, so I'll ask him... a house or something, yeah. About if, if he has any skeletons keys for sale. Roger that. Uh, turn to 66. The dwarf smiles and boasts that he can make any key to open any lock in Port Black Sands. He says his special keys are priced at 10 gold pieces each. If you want to buy a key, make the necessary deduction and add it to your adventure sheet. I'll do that. Whether or not you buy the key, you leave the shop and continue west. So Can I not ask him whilst he's cutting me a key? No, that's it. You're done. No, you're done. Yeah, that's just not. That's just not the logic of a. I walk out. I walk out of the, the shop and be like, didn't ask him. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I do that all the time. Ah. Uh, the street makes a sudden right turn and heads north. You pass a cluster of small houses and I'm are done. aware of... That was East Key Street, right? Yep, yeah, and it's made a sudden right turn heading north. <laughs> Ovs. If I go right, I'm going south. Uh... Okay. Let me change. So, obviously, the street, East... The street Key... makes a sudden right turn and heads north. <laughs> I think my map's already got paused, but let's go. Let's continue on. So I've, I've got. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! It. Key Street wasn't east, though, was it? It was west. Was it? Yeah, totally, hundred percent. East was um, something else. Key, picture of a key, locksmith. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. You pass a cluster of small houses and are aware of unseen people watching you pass by. Then the door to one of the houses opens and a small boy dressed in rags runs out and hands you a piece of paper. Without stopping, he runs off and disappears around the corner. The paper has a message on it which reads, Arrows from six bows are pointed at you. Leave ten gold pieces in the middle of the street and keep walking. It's a shakedown. If you want to obey the instructions, make the necessary deduction on your adventure sheet and lose two luck points. If you want to keep walking without leaving the gold, turn to a different page. Yeah, jog on. Jog on. Ooh, one, three. Remember what happened to me when I did this? 
by that fountain that time. <laughs> yeah. One, three, seven. Here we go. Right then. As you take your first step forwards, you are alarmed to hear the familiar whistle of arrows flying through the air. They are coming from the windows on either side of the street. Roll one die. This is the number of arrows that will hit you, and each will cause you to lose three stamina points. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How much stamina you got? Uh, 17. A six would kill me outright. Good luck. A three. Right. That's uh, nine stamina, and it says you lose two luck points if you're still alive. Jeepers keepers, that is pretty harsh. So that's 20 gold pieces that goes down there. So that I'm on eight. Is that right? Seven. Yeah. Yeah, eight left. Right. Okay. I'm starting to this whole thing of like, don't move or we'll shoot an arrow at you thing in fighting fantasy books. That's like the third time now we're over five books that that's happened to us. Arrows. Uh, if I left money though, why don't they just shoot me in now? Yeah, they could have just shot you anyway, couldn't they, and taken your cash? I have to have a sit down meal in a minute. You feel like a pincushion, and although the pain is almost unbearable, you manage to stagger on down the street. Ahead to your right, you see the door of one of the houses opening, and a little girl looks out apprehensively. I'm going to punch you in the face, please. <laughs> She beckons you to enter the house. If you wish to enter, turn to 126. If you wish to continue walking north, turn to 164. Let's go in. What, what's the worst could happen? What could possibly go wrong? 126. Uh, uh, okay. The little girl grabs hold of your arm and leads you into a back room. Sit. Okay. Saying nothing, she motions you to lie down on a sheepskin rug. I'm not sure I like where this is going. Suddenly, you are aware of a very old man sitting opposite. Oh, flashbacks. Continue. He rises slowly from his rocking chair and walks over to you. You watch, transfixed, as he takes hold of an arrow protruding from your arm and gently pulls it free without causing any pain. Oh, he's nice. The wound made by the arrow disappears before your eyes. Is there a video camera set up? Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Um, the other arrows are treated similarly if you suffered more than one wound. You may restore two stamina points for each arrow pulled free by the old man. How I'll many did you get out. hit by three? Three. So that's six back. Fourteen. Back in the game. Mm. Then, in a slow and almost inaudible voice, he tells you that he wants the broadsword that Owen Caroliff gave you in payment for the healing. You, you feel obliged to give him your sword, no. though reluctantly. No. In, ex in exchange, he gives you an ordinary fighting sword. Reduce your skill score by one. You leave the house and head north. What well, am I what, what am I doing giving an old man my sword for? Well, that's it. That's the end of the sword. Whatever the story was around that sword, we will never no. know. <laughs> so just giving it away. This is so random sometimes, isn't it? It's like, here's this really beautiful sword three pages later. You gave... <laughs> George, have you seen that in chat? Even without the camera, Andy still got fucked. <laughs> well, you got your ordinary fighting sword. So yeah. you're, not, you're not completely defenseless, I suppose. I've got two, because I had one to start off with. So I'm still... Yeah, that seems a bit random, doesn't it? That... Dual wield him. While most of the houses in the streets are small, cramped and dark, you see one ahead that stands alone and is painted bright red. The door has a welcome sign hanging from it. If you wish to enter the house, turn to 154. If you prefer to keep walking north, turn to 334. A red house with welcome on it. What could go wrong? Let's go for it. 154. What was it Red Mage said the other week? He was like, just stop doing things. <laughs> <laughs> Right, here we go. Inside the house, you find yourself in a room painted red and empty apart from a table on top of which are two glass bowls. 
In one, there is a small golden scorpion, and the other lies a silver scorpion. In the far corner of the room, there are stairs that lead up to another floor. You may pick up the golden scorpion, pick up the silver scorpion, climb the stairs, or leave the house. I don't really think picking up either the scorpion is going to be that good for me. No, I can't see... You know, scorpions, broadly speaking... Are quite dangerous. Let's go up the stairs. You know, we've broken into a house. Let's go and see who's in bed. (laughs) What kind of Resident Evil puzzle board crap is this? Right, up the (laughs) stairs then, page 80. Um, The stairs lead into a small room, again painted red. Sitting at the table is a strange creature with a long snout and deep red scaly skin. From its jaw protrude protrudes rows of sharp teeth and a long pink tongue darks quickly in and out between them. The creature looks up and stares at you. Are you wearing a scorpion brooch? If you oh, are, shit. turn to 392. Where would I if get a scorpion not, brooch? If you're not, turn to 215. I don't no, know. No, I'm not. I didn't steal his stuff. He's going to be happy. I'm not wearing any of his stuff. <laughs> yeah, you didn't nick either of his scorpions out the bowls. 215. <laughs> Uh, 2.15. The lizard-like creature starts to speak in a low, hissing voice by asking whether you would like to buy one of his famous scorpion brooches. If you wish to buy one, turn to 3.15. If you'd rather refuse politely, go back down the stairs and leave the house. Yeah, I'll buy one of his scorpion brooches. Badges. I'll take a badge. His little scorpion badge maker machine in the corner of his red house. (laughs) The creature leads you downstairs to the room below and asks if you require fortune or good health. Health. I think <laughs> I think I'll go for good health because your neighbours just shot me. Yeah. Well, uh, he says he says they are magic brooches. They cost six gold pieces, but you may only buy one. Uh, oh. Fortune or health, my good man. I'll have a health brooch, please. Health, 132. Oh, I'm losing money quick. Six. So that takes me down to 14 gold pieces left. Okay, here we go. 132. <laughs> Look for that camera again. Yeah, you was getting done, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've got a bit dark since the sun's gone down. If I turn that that way, is that a bit brighter? Uh, the creature pins the silver brooch to your leather tunic and you pay the price demanded. You have bought an item with healing properties. After surviving any battle, the brooch will immediately restore one stamina point to your total. Right, Please, cool. with your purchase, you leave the house and head north. Three, three, four. Three, three, four. So far, there's not. There's been a mix of nice people and horrible people in this town. Yeah, it's a bit, bit of a random place. Is old Port Black Sand. There were ten people who shot arrows at you, who also co-opted a poor young boy to be an accomplice in their nefarious scheme. Yeah, and an old man who. Uh healed me for my sword provided a service and then charged you for it afterwards and said give me your sword no i feel obliged well he is clearly following the american healthcare system we didn't ask fuck me no uh <laughs> you took your magic broadsword oh, true was it magic uh, it didn't give me anything extra at the start but it certainly took some no i lost it but me and chat think it was magic. I think you've lost something important to the storyline there. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, walking towards you down the street are two town guards. They stop in front of you and demand to see your papers. If you possess the merchant's pass, turn to 255. If you do not, turn to 99. When have like we I'm... had a chance to get a merchant's pass? Merchant's pass. Can I make what? one? <laughs> I don't know, but you haven't got one, so I'm turning to 99. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Start a fight, you will heal. Well, yeah. Uh, you are unable to explain why you are in put. <laughs> Sorry. It's uh, my merchant guard- pass. The guards draw their swords, telling you you are under arrest. I'll you draw your sword that. and fight them one at a time. Oh, nice of them to do that. So we've got two guards here. One is skill seven, stamina four. Okay. And one, and one is skill six, stamina six. 
Right, right well, let's, let's take on the big bruiser first then, skill 7 dude. I've forgotten, is it two dice or one dice for a fight? Uh, it's two dice plus your skill. Plus your skill, yeah, right. Okay, uh, so 7 4 is up first. 5, six, 6, 7, 8, 9, 18. Uh, 14, 6, 7, 8. No, uh, 15, but still nonetheless. Slam, bam. There's so, two of his health down two. One more hit, and you've taken this guy out. Oh, oh nine on, plus I nine. missed the top of my dice tower. There you go. 18 again. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I've rolled a 3, plus a 7 is 10. Right. You blaps the first dude. Oops, it side of his head. Does that mean after every fight he gets one health back? Yeah, I think that's what it's saying, Al. Yeah. Uh, right, this next guy, 10. 7 plus 9 is 16. Okay. Uh, uh, next roll. Ooh, that's a good roll for me. 12. No, not 12. 14. 10, 11, 12, 13. Oof. 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 So, well, 12. one more hit and you've got him. Six, six plus nine, fifteen. Fifteen. No, that's not right. No, I'm talking rubbish. Twelve. I can't even add up. Six plus seven is twelve. Basic maths, folks. There you go. Right, well, restore your one health after your successful fight. I'll have to do over that page. Back to thirteen. Oh, I've lost track now. Turn to two eight five. You may you make a rapid search through the guards' possessions and find oh, seven work. gold pieces. Oh, I have that. A set of keys and some stale bread. Set of twenty-one gold pieces, some bread, and set of keys. Beautiful. It says here, make a note of what you wish to keep. So you don't have to take it all, mate, if you don't want. Well, if I can carry it all, I might as well. <laughs> yes. Danny, the 6 plus 7 is indeed 13. <laughs> Basic maths. Basic maths. <laughs> Which I'm highly skilled at, as you can probably see. Quick maths. Uh, right, turn to 227. <laughs> uh, that stale bread is going to be important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Might go feed the birds later. Toppen, sabag. Uh, hang on, let me have a sip of my wine. This is why I can't add seven and six. Uh, the street soon makes another sharp turn to the right and you find yourself walking east. Okay. Outside one of the houses... Oh, sorry, mate, what was that? I was saying okie doke. Okay. Uh, outside one of the houses to your left is a pile of rubbish and broken objects. On top of the pile is a pair of old boots that look about your size. If you wish to try them on, turn to 362. If you want to keep walking east, turn to 103. Random old pair of boots. Caught your eye. Oof. No. I am Andromedus Stabface. I've got some kicking pair of trainers. I do not need some shitty boots off of a rubbish pile. Move along, please. <laughs> Stab the boots. <laughs> Stab the boots. They're evil boots. 103. <laughs> I want no shit boots. That's stupid. Right. Fair enough. Jocelyn says, take the boots. I ain't touching those yucky boots. All right. <laughs> yeah. Inside the boots is a brand new broadsword. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, or a broad, a browed sword. You arrive at a four-way junction in the street. The street continuing east changes its name to Clock Street, and the street running north and south is called Market Street. I don't know if that adds up from the information yeah, we had earlier. Yeah. Uh, looking north, you see a crowd of people walking up the street, cheering loudly and waving their arms in the air. You decide to follow them. One four eight. <laughs> I don't get to so, go. Yeah, yeah, so here's this four-way junction, but you're going yeah. that way. Crowd uh, one, four, people. eight. One, four, eight. Crowd of people, crowd of people, crowd of people, crowd of people. Uh, okay, then. 
As you catch up with the chanting crowd, you see they are carrying eggs and rotten tomatoes. Soon the street opens out into a large market square. All around the edge are stalls with vendors, hawkers, musicians and entertainers carrying on their business. In the middle of the square is an elevated pillory. Above the noise of the crowd, a trumpet sounds and the crowd start to pelt the man in the pillory with rotten food. An old woman standing next to you offers you two eggs to throw. Not wishing to appear like an outsider, you take the eggs and hurl them. But as you do so, the old woman picks your pockets without you noticing. Oh, what? Lose one gold piece or any one item you may have. What happens if I need stale bread later, eh? <laughs> well, you've got a choice. One gold piece or an item that you own. Yeah, have a gold piece, the old lady. She gave me two eggs. I think it's fair. Yeah. yeah. Fair. It's quite expensive eggs, to be fair. But Well, I spent six gold pieces on a badge. Uh, you, you walk away from the crowd to look at various stalls. 287. That's where the boots would have been handy. Chats, uh, I'm thinking the boots might help you out against the old pickpocket. What, some anti pickpocket boots? Yeah, maybe. I mean, undoubtedly, they were magical boots. I doubt it. They have some kind of like, you pick up the boots and then you die. 100% the boots were magical boots. Yeah. Um, we'll see. All right. The food stalls are selling fruit, vegetables, meat, and hot soup, corn, and chestnuts for hungry shoppers. You may eat some hot food if you wish. You can pay one gold piece to increase your stamina by two. I've got like loads of meals. Right. Well, can, don't I just eat, can I just eat some meals? Uh, well, the rules are unclear on that. <laughs> on that point, as discussed earlier. I think you can eat some of your food now if you want. I'll have one of my food instead. Go down to nine meals, go back up to 17. And I, I, will, I, I, I won't have any of the, the shite that's coming out of their stalls, roast rat or whatever it is. Fair enough. Walking north along the west side of the square, you see a man dressed in a purple velvet playing in purple velvet playing a lyre. If you wish to stop and listen, turn to three. If you'd rather walk past, turn to three nine eight. Ooh. Let's listen to some music. No doubt I'll get pickpocketed. Uh, no, yeah, bro, don't stand still for too long. <laughs> I'm a wise, dragon-slaying, you know, streetwise adventurer that lets an old woman steal out of my pockets. This is basically the streets of Salford, you know what I'm saying? The man stops playing and tells you that he can bring you good fortune. For the sum of three gold pieces, he'll sing you a song that will increase your luck. If you wish to pay the musician, turn to 37. If you don't believe him, walk to the next door. I'll go to the next door. My luck's pretty good. At nine. 398. What's he going to do? Punch me in the back of the head. Well, you should never piss off a bard. Does he attack me with an oracle and an elf thief? <laughs> <laughs> a small circle of people are standing around a bare chested man. He is enormous and his muscles look as hard as iron. He is asking the crowd for a volunteer to play catch with a cannonball. He states that whoever drops the cannonball must pay the other five gold pieces. If you wish to take him on at his game, turn to 378. If you'd rather walk on, turn to 52. <laughs> Didn't know I was in this story. What, the old lady giving me eggs? Um, <laughs> go on, let's play catch with the cannonball. What could go wrong with this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't listen to a lovely tune played by a bard but you'll, you'll try and play catch with a cannonball uh, 3, 7, 8 roll one die old, alternately for yourself and for the bare chested man uh, to represent the cannonball passing between you right. repeat this process until a one is thrown which is when you will drop the cannonball so whoever rolls the one first basically check can you give me a roll D6, please? All right, I'll roll for the bare-chested man. I've just rolled a four. Exclamation D6. There's a time delay, didn't you know? There is a time delay. 
Ooh. Oh, flipping heck. It was that. <laughs> You bunch of I've lost I've lost I've dropped my balls. My balls have dropped. Right, uh you need to pay him five gold pieces, I think it was, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, five gold pieces, please. Bloody hell. My gold pieces is going up and down more than my stamina. Right, fifteen I'm on now. <laughs> Next time, take the boots. <laughs> right, uh finishing the game, turn to fifty two. <laughs> That's, that was epic <laughs> right here we go uh, behind the next stall is a young man selling small weapons and equipment the price of his wares are chalked up on a slate you can buy throwing knives for four gold pieces climbing rope for two gold pieces a butcher's meat hook for two gold pieces that's like that uh, what's that game that you play Al the serial killer one an iron spike for one gold piece or a lantern for three gold pieces. If you wish to buy some or all of the items, make the necessary adjustments on your adventure sheet, then walk north. Dead by daylight, yeah, with the who's the there's who's the butcher's meat hook? They put the dudes up, don't they? I think Basically I've been watching Al murder people in the middle of the day. I'll have a rope and uh, and a lantern, please. Rope and the lantern. Okay, that's two, five in total. Ten. <laughs> Rope and lantern. Cool. Okay, turn to page 200. Right, everyone remember 200. I need to take a brief bathroom break. Cool. Why don't you put an advert on? I'll get myself a drink. Uh, Roger that. I will do that. Although I'm not convinced the adverts actually fire when I press the button. Me neither. See you in three. Hang on, I haven't pressed the button yet. It's going very, very, very slow. Why is that not? Scroll down. Scroll down. No, not sideways. Down. Here we go. Uh, right, 90 seconds. Started? I don't know what it's doing. Okay. We may... Can you... So, uh, did that work? Did you get gratuitously advertised too, or or what? Oh, Andy's turned his camera off. Oh, I've got a be right back screen. I should have just put that on. Like a pro. No, you didn't get advertised too. So you just basically stared at our blank walls. <laughs> Uh, it's been too long. I'm currently going, keep trying to get into Dead by Daylight, but it looks so technical. It seemed pretty straightforward when I was watching. Uh, I'll play it last time. Just creep up on people and stab them. 
But I may be just bearing it, breaking it down to its bare essentials, right? <clears throat> hey, Donny. You just caught us on a break. Andy's nipped the loo and I was just topping up my wine. I prefer killing myself. Yeah, that's what... <clears throat> I would argue is the... I make it look straightforward. Yes, you do. You've got the the eyes of a killer. <laughs> eyes and mind of a killer. My job has me doing deliveries. All oh, right, okay, mate. Well, thanks for swinging by nonetheless. It's always a pleasure to have you, even for the briefest of moments, Donny, my man. If, uh, if you want to... Be sure to listen to the latest episode of the Ministry of Dice podcast going out on Monday. You will also get a chair lubricant update from Andy. And that's just for you, my man. Just for you. All right, well, while he's getting a drink, although I don't think he is getting a drink, I think he's checking in on the Eurovision Song Contest. While he's getting a drink, um, I need more ideas for... Chat commands or stuff I can put in to enhance the fighting fantasy experience. We're only five books in and there's like a bazillion of them. So we'll be doing a fair few of these in the months to come. Um, we'll, have to, we'll start working on kind of Andy's tech side so we can see his dice rolls and what have you. But any, any thoughts or ideas from chat on that front would be greatly appreciated. Here he is. Sounds like, sounds like he might have some snacks in tow as well. I tell you what, Sweden century isn't good this year. <laughs> I just said that I thought you'd be checking in on the Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a different dice option for you. You need to find the link for it. All right, Brill, Jordan. Yeah, let me know. All right. We're in the market. We're heading north. We're I'm very lo-fi right now. I need to update those Apex animations as well because while in principle the idea is solid. Oh nice. Um the my animating skills leave a lot to be desired. Okay, you're set to carry on then, my good man. Alright. Everyone back in chat? Is everyone been to bathroom or what have you? I should make a note of the timestamp on that as well and put like a little fast forward in on the YouTube upload. Clever. Okay. okay. In the next stall area, there is a small, brightly coloured tent. Attached to it is a sign which reads Madam Star Clairvoyant. If you wish to enter the tent, turn to 394. If you'd rather continue north, turn to 117. Ah, fuck her, let's go north. Go north. Go north. Let's get this done. I just need to find Nicodemus, innit? Yeah, yeah. Faffing about, <laughs> just doing your weekly shot. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the main shot though. Not a big shot. No, not big shot. Uh, mid, midweek shot. Midweek, yeah. Welcome, break. <laughs> At the end of the market, a street named Bridge Street runs north out of the square. You decide to walk down it in the hope of finding the elusive Nicodemus. Now, Jocelyn says, "What's so important about North? There seems to be a bit of a North vibe." It's because if you're doing a map, you need to go a certain direction. Else, if you keep going left, right, and all over the place, you won't be able to do a map. They're all like that, I've noticed. It starts to rain, and the tumble-down houses huddled together on either side of the street look as if they need shelter themselves. Most have their windows boarded up and are empty. The door to one flaps noisily in the wind. If you wish to take refuge in the derelict house until the rain stops, turn to one one uh, one eight eight. If you'd rather press on, turn to thirty one. Go on then. Let's go and have a butchers in this house. Let's go and break Are into you sure? someone's house. Yeah, I mean the bottom line here is you go in the derelict house is probably like a gelatinous cube waiting for you. If you press on, it turns out that the rain is some kind of magic poisonous acid rain that will burn your face off. So yeah, I think one way, one way or another. <laughs> uh, so you're going into the house, 188. It is gloomy in the house, but you can make out the shapes of abandoned furniture. 
Oh. Litter and rubble is strewn all over the floor. You find a broken chair and slump down in it to rest. Suddenly, you notice oh, something God. slither across the floor. Here and before go. you can get to your feet, you see in the half-life that you've been encircled by six snakes, each a meter long. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, 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 shit. shit, shit. shit, shit. If you wish to hack at them with your sword, turn to two, five, three. If you want to make a dash for the door, turn to fifteen. Six, six, one meter long snakes. That was my nickname at university: meter long snake. Was it? Yeah. Sure, it was. Um, yeah, let me hack at the snakes with my sword. Two, five, three. With your standard fighting sword. Yeah, with my non broadsword. Two, five, three. The snakes are not very tough for a person trained in the art of swordsmanship. Treat them as a single creature. Okay. Um, however, each attack round they inflict a wound on you. You take four points of stamina damage. Flip off. Yeah. However, they are only five five. Okay. Right, here we go then. Let's do it. Snake battle. Snake. Ooh. Six plus 15. Fourteen. I have two. I'm getting sick of these motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking chat. Oh, that's a crap oh, eight. Six, seven, eight plus nine, seventeen. Down to one. Uh, that's a bit better. Eleven. Uh, 13. Okay. That is some dead snakes. So earn yourself an extra, uh, oh, yeah. an increase in your stamina point. I'm um, back up to top anyway. And 75. Here's 75. You're getting all like really rubbish enemies. Do you remember that last one? And I had <laughs> like. Yeah. Fight these two guys. They're both 12 12 each. Or when you land on the planet and it's like, do you want to fight these guys? Yes. They just slap you in the face and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, the rain has stopped and you set off north again. Turn to 31. That is, 0.75 is a single sentence. What's the point of that? Also, is there no benefit of that room of weak snakes? No, nope, not you just wear have... their skins as some form of like glove. <laughs> nope, you just had to sit down, murder some snakes... And then when the rain stopped, went, all right, crack on. Cool. <laughs> we may have to, at this rate, start exploring some actual role-playing because we're clearly getting fed up of the on-rails options that this is offering us. A conversation for another day. Ahead, you see a wooden bridge stretching out over a dirty river. Various bits of rubbish are floating down the, to the sea on its black surface and you squirm at the sight of a human hand passing by. Ew. The bridge supports and columns reach high above you and you see skulls, both human and non-human, tied to them. The wind makes an eerie noise as it whistles through the bridge structure, reminding you of a tortured soul crying out for help. Almost hidden from view is a small flight of steps going down underneath the bridge from where you are standing. A one-legged man carrying a sack is crossing the bridge from the northern bank. Why is no one attacking him? <clears throat> if you wish to climb down the steps, turn to 329. If you want to wait and talk to the man, turn to 364. I'm going to talk to this one-legged man. What possible, what possible kind of danger could I be in from a one-legged man in a sack, eh? Absolutely, compared to taking the steps down into some shady underbridge tunnel. Everyone knows that trolls live under bridges. Yeah, three, six, four. One legged man, what have you got for us? Let's see. Can I stab him and steal his stuff? <laughs> Plot twist the sack is full of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> the gaunt faced man looks thoroughly miserable. What? Shit, Santa. He's, what you got in your bag? He sees you and shrinks back, telling you that it's not worth robbing him because he's got no money. You tell him you do not wish to rob him, but you're seeking an old wizard named Nicodemus. 
He stares at you for what is a, with a surprised expression on his face and says, for two gold pieces, I can tell you where he is. You decide to trust the old man and pay him for his information. <laughs> okay. He pockets the gold and says, You're, you are standing on top of him. Nicodemus lives in a hut underneath this bridge. He Lying throws back bastard. his head and lets out a shrill laugh before hobbling off on his crutches, obviously pleased with himself. Can I stand you shake, him now? You shake your head and walk over the steps that lead down to beneath the bridge. Oh, no. It's going to send me that way anyway. I bet he he's not He is there. the wizard. Yeah. Three, two, nine. The smell by the water's edge is terrible. A bit like Southampton. Above, you hear the sound of footsteps crossing the wooden bridge. Built into the foundations of the bridge are a wooden hut, is a wooden hut. Drawn curtains obstruct your view into the hut, but you know you are not welcome when you read the words, Keep out! Painted on the door in large red letters. You draw in a deep breath and knock on the door. You hear muttering and the shuffling of feet and suddenly the door is thrown open. Before you stands a white-haired old man with a long beard wearing long white robes. You shall not pass! Saruman. He looks at you sternly and says, Explain yourself to Nicodemus. You are elated at finding Nicodemus and tell him about Zanbar Bone's reign of terror in the town of Silverton and why Owen Carolyth asked you to find his old friend to help them. Nicodemus frowns and walks back inside his hut, telling you to follow him. He sits down in a rocking chair and starts to speak in a calm voice. I am old and tired and wish for no more adventure. I live here under Singing Bridge in Port Blacksand to escape the pleas for aid from people fallen on hard times. Hence, no one bothers me. But I do wish to help my old friend Owen. I will tell you... How to defeat the Night Prince Zambar Bone. Oh, piss off. Just do it. Listen you lazy carefully. wizard. Listen carefully. Let me get my pen ready. Remember, you may only defeat him after sunset. In daylight hours, he exists on another plane. No doubt he will have his servants to protect him, but should you get past them, you will need something special to deal with Bone himself. To protect yourself from his entrancing stare, you must have a white unicorn in a yellow sun tattooed on your forehead. What? You need a white unicorn in a yellow sun tattooed on your forehead. Obvs. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> Jordan's like, and the old boots, don't forget your old boots. Normal weapons will not harm him. First, you must shoot him through the heart with a silver arrow. This will paralyse him, but not kill him. Then you must quickly rub the ground compound. Then you must quickly rub the ground compound of black pearl, hag's hair, and a lotus flower into his eyes. Hold on, hold on. Rub ground what? Uh, black pearl, hag's hair, and lotus flower. Black pearl, hag's hair, and a lotus flower. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all those things are easy to get hold of with luck he will decay before you in seconds if your arrow misses i'm afraid you will die the moment he touches you die. the items for the compound can all be found in port black sand if you search hard enough oh christ i regret i cannot accompany you what a dickhead. Has he got any, can I ask him if he's got any black pearl hags, hair, lotus flowers or a tattoo shop? Nicodemus then draws you a map of how to reach Zambar Bones, guarded tower from Port Black Sand. He okay. stands up, shakes your hand and wishes you well. You leave his hut, climb the steps and cross the bridge over Catfish River. Bridge Street continues north. If you wish to walk west down Harbour Street, turn to 91. If you wish to turn down Candle Street, which is east, turn to 238. So what have we got? Candle Street, East. Yeah, East or Harbour Street, West. Harbour. Bridge Street continues north before ending at a junction. However, that junction does not seem to be an option right now. You can go down Harbour Street or Candle Street. Hmm. 
What shall I do, guys? Shall I go oh. west? West, the same west. West. Harbour Street, it is. Go west. Life, oh, is, life peaceful. is peaceful oh. there. Uh, right, you pass a beggar in the street. He is sitting in the gutter and holds an empty tin in his hand. If you wish to toss a gold piece into his tin, turn to 332. If you just walk past him, turn to 124. Go on, then. He might be a, you know, out-of-work tattooist. <laughs> 332. The beggar tips his hat in gratitude and mumbles a few words. Add one luck point before continuing west. Take that. One, two, four. A narrow alleyway runs south off the street between two houses. If you wish to walk down the alleyway, turn to 326. If you want to continue along Harbour Street, turn to 180. Ooh, go on, then. Sore old man back. I need to find some stuff now, so I need on the, to go on the hunt for some... Weird shit and a tattoo, so let's go. And have going a look into, into the alleyway. Right? alleyway. Yeah. Three, two, six. Ahead, the alleyway is strewn with rubbish and discarded possessions. Suddenly, you hear a growling and you see movement amongst the rubbish. Ooh. What have we got? You draw your sword just in time as two wild dogs, each a meter and a half long, leap at you. Fight both dogs at the same time. Both dogs will make a separate attack on you in each attack round. Mm. But you must choose which of the two you will fight. Attack your chosen dog as in a normal battle. Against the other, you will throw for your attack strength in the normal way, but you will not wound it if your attack strength is greater. You must just count this as if you've defended yourself against it. Okay, okay, fair enough. What the um the stamina's uh we've got five, four and three. Right. Four four and a four three. Cool, I'll do the four three first if it gives uh, me that option. Okie dokie, yep. Hey beauty an eleven, that gives me a eighteen. No? Uh, yeah, eighteen. Nine thirteen for me. That's a good right. hit. I'm going to spend a point of luck that I just made from that dude down to nine. Kill it. Ooh, check you out, Cheeky. Take it easy, Jordo. Thanks for swinging by, man. Uh, and then I'll roll for the second. Ooh. So this is, I can hurt you, but you can't hurt me this time. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, man. 11, 15. Uh, eight plus nine is 17. What? All right, well, you just defended that attack. Okay, normal attack time then. Right. Uh, oh, five, six, oh seven, 12. Eight, 11. 11. Oof. Uh, that is 21. Jesus. What, one more hit and he's gone. 10, 14 for me. 9, 18. All right. No, no nine, 9 and 9 is 18. Yeah. Yeah, well, in attack. any case, you made short work of the two wild dogs. I was hoping to have... Uh, Tamed them and had them kind of follow Those me. Pets, yeah. Do you have any of Mrs. Pipes? Hang on. If you win, <laughs> turn to one eight four. Yeah. Do you have any of Mrs. Pipes' golden flowers? If you do, turn to fifty five. If not, turn to three oh eight. I don't have any of Mrs. Pipes' golden flowers. I'm afraid. Don't know who she is. No. There is nothing to be found in the alleyway, so you return to Harbour Street. Turn to 180. Oh, well. You was done, bruh. It was, wasn't it? Ahead, you hear the noisy clatter of galloping hooves on the cobblestones. You hear the noise of wooden wheels and an urging voice followed by the crack of a whip. Someone is rapidly approaching in a horse-drawn carriage. If you wish to see who it is, turn to 344. If you'd rather hide out of sight behind a barrel, turn to 34. I would like to hide behind a barrel, please. What? You don't want to see who this is? No, I'm going to hide. Right, okay. 34. That's how Carriage... I'm going to survive that long. <laughs> <laughs> the carriage thunders by you, and you see its driver urging on the four horses as though his life depended on it. 
As the noise of the carriage fades into the distance, we step out onto the street and continue west. <laughs> on seven one. That it's, was an interesting encounter. This the carriage is, was probably full of hags, hair, lotus flowers, and black pearls. I expect. <laughs> yeah, and a tattooist. Yeah. <laughs> right then. The street gradually starts to run downhill. The houses end at a tavern called the Black Lobster, and the street opens out onto the quayside. A stone jetty runs out to sea, and tied to it is an old galleon. It is flying the skull and crossbones, and is probably one of the many pirate ships that anchor in Port Black Sand. Harbour Street turns right at the jetty and runs north, parallel to the shore, as far as you can see. If you wish to walk down the jetty and climb on board the ship, turn to 399. If you wish to carry on walking up Harbour Street, turn to 78. Can I, go to, can I not go to the Black Lobster? No. No, it just gives you the jetty onto the ship or up Harbour Street. Go on then. Let's go and have a look on this pirate ship. Yeah, because that's going to end well. Yeah. No, no, no. Is it the Black Pearl? Three, nine. See. Do you know, I was thinking about that the other day because we were talking about Liar's Dice. Oh. Momentary patented Chris Tangent. Me and Andy have recently been talking about Liar's Dice. And I tell you where you'll have seen it before. It's in one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Oh. They have a game of Liar's Dice uh, with Octopus Face Dude. Barbosa. No, not Barbosa. Oh. Octopus Face Dude. He's... What's the nice verb? Uh, uh, David Jones. Is that David Jones? I can't remember, but Octopus Face Dude plays the Octopus organ. Dice. Yeah. Uh, and he plays a game of Liar's Dice with Will and Will's dad. Uh. A rope ladder hangs down from the stern of the ship to the jetty. There are three pirates playing Liar's Dice on the deck. <laughs> There's also a gangplank leading up the side of the ship. Uh, do you wish to climb aboard the ship climbing the rope ladder or do you want to walk straight up the gangplank straight up the gangplank Oh, because I'm a badass me I've, I've slayed dragons 294 uh, you have you're famous for people it. know who I am they'll be like have your autograph what's your name Ardonius Ardonius Stag face um, of England. Andromeda stag face. Andromeda. Of Ingerland. At the top of the gangplank stands one of the ship's crew. On seeing you, he draws his cutlass and tells you to get off my ship. If you wish to talk back, if you wish to walk back down the gangplank along the jetty, turn left up Harbour Street. <laughs> if you're going to draw your sword and deal with the pirate, turn to three eight six. Seems a bit harsh that I've gone on like he's not done any damage to anyone. And he's just saying, Can you not come on my boat? And I'm gonna be like Nah mate, have it. Yeah, I mean you are by every definition trespassing. Yeah. Yeah. In America he could shoot me legally. Uh not in all states. Go on then, okay. let's have a fight with a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's times in your life where you think, oh, if only I'd, you know, told the grandkids that story. All right. The pirate seems pleased that you wish to fight. He grins, revealing his toothless mouse. Mouse? mouse? <laughs> his toothless <laughs> mouse. <laughs> Before we get down to fighting, this, this is Mickey here. His <laughs> my toothless mouth. Mouse. Oh, he's tough. Is he? Seven six. Uh, seven five, sorry. Seven five. Ah, worse. Oh, God, I keep missing the top of the dice tower. Eight. Uh, five. Seventeen. Twelve. Oh. Good hit. Yeah, basically, if you roll a good skill at the beginning of the game, all of these fights right. are yours. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. Nine. Thirteen. Nine plus seven. The Ferris Broadcaster. Quick maths. Quick maths. Nine plus seven. Sixteen. Oh, I take some damage there. Oof. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. About time. Uh, twelve. Eighteen. Oof, Jesus. Point of oh, luck. One more, Kill him off. One more. One more hit, and you got. Oh, boo! You like throwing that look around a bit too willy nilly. 
Yeah, well, there's not a lot to be using it on so far. Yeah. Oh, and I gain gain back a point. Of... Get get one of your oh. yeah, points back. Yeah. Alrighty then. The pirates' pockets contain nothing apart from a piece of stale bread. <laughs> Two he was, times. Like, loaded up on stale bread. Two bro. times bread. I'm gonna get to like Mr. Boner and just like wave like, some stale bread. Do you have two pieces of stale bread? If you do, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lantern, uh, a rope, and some stale bread. Yes. Um, you leave him to start searching the wooden boxes and barrels on the ship's deck. Turn to eighty-four. I'm basically robbing them. Yeah, you are. You're robbing the pirates. You know, I didn't mind about the old lady who picked my pocket when she gave me some eggs, or. The old man who said, "Can you have this ornate broadsword that was gifted to you by the mayor of wherever it was?" And you got that nicked off you. Yeah, but I don't. Well, that was payment for services in kind, wasn't it? I think he was dodgy. Anyway, well, he did. He did bring your health back, though. He didn't. You know, he he legit healed you after the arrow attack. Yeah, I could have sit down and had some food and done that. Well, true story. Yeah. The barrels all contain rotten fruit, and the boxes contain manacles and leg irons. Great. Uh, perhaps this is a slave trading ship. Ooh. There is nothing else of interest to, to you on deck. If you wish to walk over to the deck cabin to climb down the stairs to the lower decks, turn to 50. If you want to leave the ship and go back to the jetty, turn to 78. I seem like I've gone off tangent, but go on then. Let's go downstairs go and on. see what's going on. Well, now, now we know that it's a slave trading ship. I think it's your duty to go and disrupt disrupt what they've got going down here, isn't it? Not that bother, man. Oh, I've, seen, I've seen what <laughs> this is. Fighting fantasy taken. <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like Game of Thrones, Daenerys freeing the slaves. Uh, the stairs lead down into the ship's cargo hold. It is empty. Oh. Opposite you, a corridor leads from the hold to two oh, closed doors. You walk along the corridor and listen at the doors. Uh, you can hear loud snoring on the left. From the door on the right, you hear nothing. Pardon me. You hear nothing. Do you go left to the snoring or right to the nothing? Left to the snoring. Let's stab him in his sleep. Two, seven, one. Damn right. Two, seven, one. Uh, asleep in their bunks are three pirates. It's quite good artwork in this one. I like the artwork on this. Let me see it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Their room is small and contains only clothing and a few personal possessions. It looks as if these pirates have been drinking and gambling. There is an uncorked bottle of rum, a mug and a pack of cards on top of the barrel in the centre of the room. You see that one of the pirates is wearing a small leather pouch around his neck. If you wish to creep up and try and cut it loose, turn to 162. If you want to close the door and leave, turn to 284. No, no, you know, we've gone this far in robbing these yeah. Um, yeah, sailors. Pri privateers is the term that they prefer. They're, they're in employ of the Port Black Sand. Boxes and boxes of Dark Phoenix Saga is found on the deck. Coupled <laughs> <laughs> with some kryptonite crisis. <laughs> oh, test your luck. If you are lucky, you manage Oops. to cut the pouch loose. If you are unlucky, the man's eyes will flick open. Shouldn't have done those lucky things earlier. Four, five, six, seven. With a luck of eight, I am good. Whoa. Turn to seven. Do I still have to spend a luck point when I do one of them? I think I do. Uh, I can't remember. Do you want me to check at the back? Yeah, go on, because that obviously makes a difference. I'm sure last time I think we said that we did. If you test your luck, mm -hmm. you have to lose um. Oh, look, here you go. No, it doesn't say that. Okay, cool. Right, right, let's keep it then. Anyway, I got lucky. I robbed him. You tiptoe quietly out the door 
In the corridor, you open the pouch and find six black pearls. Boom! Hey, Joe. Tick the black pearls off the list. Only some hag's hair, lotus flowers, and the bizarrest tattoo of a white unicorn on a yellow sun to be tattooed onto my forehead. On your forehead. To go. Add two luck points. Oh, hello. Happy days uh, for that as well. Back up to the level there. If no, you've no, not eight, already ten. done so, you may open the other door or leave the ship. Oh, I'll open the other door because obviously it's not going to. Why not? You're, yeah. on a, you're on a roll. Two, three, two. Uh, two, three, two. That was me on a roll. The door opens into a small room and in the centre of which is a steaming hot tub of water. <laughs> it's only fans MOD with the hot tub. <laughs> Let me get undressed. <laughs> if you wish to hide behind the door inside the room to see who is about to take a bath, turn to 12. If you would rather close the door, turn to 383. Uh, oh, is this Jaunty Goblin? Oh, City of Thieves. I actually played this one through just recently. How's it been going so far? Um, yeah, been going all right, Jaunty Goblin. Andy, I'm obviously narrating. Andy's playing the character there. You've been doing all okay. We've found Nicodemus. We have. Um, he's, he's given us the list of things we need to kill. Zanzibar Bone. Yeah. And so we're, so you're still you're bimbling around. Uh, port Black Sands to find the bits now. So you've got mm. the Black Pearls. What do you need? Hag's hair and... Hag's hair, lotus flower. I need a tattoo of a unicorn. In a sun. And a sun on my forehead. And also I need some silver arrows because I need to shoot it with silver arrows. Yes. A and a yes. bow as well, really. Would be handy unless I kind of, you know, Steve the Power Tailor it into his heart. I know I need a bow. So, uh, yeah, I'm hiding behind a door because I want to see who's going to get naked in the buff. Allegedly found him. Justin's still, uh, she's on the theory that that wasn't the real Nicodemus. Oh, God. I don't really think uh, it's, it's, it's that deep. <laughs> we're hiding behind the door to see who's taking a bath. Okay, here we go. Page 12. Uh, after a few minutes, you hear footsteps coming down the corridor. The door opens and a man walks into the room wearing nothing but a towel around his fat stomach. Way. You watch as he drops the towel and lowers himself gently into no. the hot tub with a loud sigh. If you wish to surprise him by drawing your sword and uttering <laughs> a loud <coughs> turn to 176 if you want to creep out the room back into the corridor while he submerges himself turn to 383. Let's surprise him with my sword. <laughs> oh dear. One, one seven six. Hello. <laughs> you tell the worried bather that despite your hatred for pirates, you will not harm him if he cooperates with you. You ask him if he has any of the items that you're searching for, but he replies that as a captain of a pirate ship, he does not need such things. You press the blade of your sword against his neck to make sure he is not lying. He looks terrified and assures you that he is telling the truth. Then he says... But I do know where you can get a silver arrow. Oh. Ben Borryman, the silversmith, will make anything in silver at a price. You will find him at Cog Street. Cog Street. Making a mental note of the information, you leave the shivering captain alone in his room, locking the door behind you. Outside in the corridor, you may either open the door if you've not done already. You've done that one. So it's leaving the ship time. Yeah. I quite like that, where it kind of tells you, like, if you do something, it actually tells you where to go, as opposed to the blind luck of do you go to Clock Street or Key yeah, Street, yeah. you know? They just fully open Texas, even though it's not a good decision. I whip out my sword, Andy England, 2021. Yeah, I hope you're... You, what's your clipping game like today? Uh, Joe, he's, he's just done a lovely little cooey. Cooey. <laughs> The street runs north along the quayside for a few hundred metres before arriving at a junction. Uh, you can continue north up Harbour Street or walk east along Clog Street. Clog or Cog? Clog. Was that what? Where? Oh, that's going to... Yeah, I've heard you wrong. Yeah, let's go to Clog Street. 
Two sixteen. Well, I don't really? know. Now I'm doubting myself. <clears throat> Clock it's Street not. is very narrow and lined with terraced cottages and the occasional shop. To your left, you see what looks like a small boy lying face down on the cobblestones, groaning loudly. <laughs> um, he's planking. Planker. A, a hood is pulled over his head and you cannot see his face. A wooden hoop and stick lie by his side. Do you stop and help or do you work, walk on? Walk on. Fuck him. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, I mean, last time, wasn't there that guy by that bench in the wood that one time? Yeah. What about the guy who was caught in like the trap and you you saved him and he robbed you? Yeah. yeah. Screw you, kid. Can I can I give him a little kick on the way past, please? Sure. Oh, sh- <laughs> shit. Clog Street, as in shoe. Should have taken the old boots. They're still on the old boots. <laughs> on the old boots. Uh, you pick up boots. Go immediately to the end. You win. <laughs> One of the shops to your left is a candle maker's. There are many different coloured candles burning brightly in the window. Do you enter the shop or do you continue east? I continue east, mate. I've only got seven gold coins and I need these silver arrows. Two eighty. Bollocks to his candles. I don't want to go to Lush. I want to go. You'll to get there, the and silversmith. the silversmith will be like, "I'll make you a silver arrow for two purple candles." <laughs> 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 Uh, further along the street on the left is another shop. The sign outside reads Ben Borrowman Silversmith. Yes, please. 2.13. Here we go. We're clipping on at a nice old rate here. 2.13. Okay, here we go. Here we go. A man wearing a white apron is sitting at a bench busily polishing a silver goblet. There are several silver objects in a glass cupboard secured by an iron grill at the back of the shop. You may talk to the silversmith, attack him with your sword, or leave the shop. Can I talk to him, please? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to buy a silver arrow, please, sir. Or a few, because his guards need to be shot in the heart with a silver arrow as well. I'm hoping that they're not going to cost me more than seven gold. Else I am going to have to try and, like, you know, barter for some stale bread. You ask Ben Borrowman if he has any silver arrows for sale. He replies that he does not, but he will make you one for a cost of 10 gold pieces. Oh, cocksucker. Or two magical items. If you can afford his asking price, turn to 85. If you cannot afford the price, turn to 42. What magical items have I got? I'm not sure you've got any, have you? you got a potion. I've got a potion, and I've got my magic badge. Your scorpion, that's right. Yeah, I've got my scorpion badge and my potion. So it's 42 then. And seven gold pieces. Can I have one and a half arrows, please? You tell the man that you cannot pay the price he is asking. Oh, wait a minute. I can. Yeah, oh shit. Oh, can someone remember what the last number was? Uh-oh. Anyone? <laughs> I think I've turned to the wrong page. Uh, Clog Street is 216. You didn't help the boy. 317. Sorry, folks. I lost my way. Uh, Continued east. 280. You went into the shop. 213. I've got some lovely magic bread. Talk to him. 248. <laughs> asking price if you can afford his asking price turn to 85 so I did go to the wrong one sorry my bad my bad you pay the silversmith and wait patiently while he makes a silver arrow for uh, you so that's a line you. through my skill and a line through me um, yeah it's your potion and your badge scorpion yeah Cool. Uh, finally, he presents you with it and assures you that it will be completely accurate in flight. You thank him for his trouble and leave the shop. Silver arrow. 100. Uh, you arrive at a junction. Do you turn north into Tower Street or continue east into Sable Street? 
Um, let's continue north into oh, I'm searching for stuff. Um, Sable, go on then. Let's go to Sable Street. Sable. Okay, two, four, six. As you walk warily down the narrow cobbled street, you are suddenly confronted by a little old man who dashes out of one of the houses. He pulls a dirty bottle out of a canvas bag. As he speaks, you can't help staring at the large wart on his nose with its tuft of hair. He smiles and asks if you would like to pay two old boots for a drink of his wonderful healing potion. (laughs) I'm joking, it's two gold pieces. Um, well, no, because my stats are all, like, pretty topped up at the moment. Uh, so, no, I don't need this stupid drink. You're going to crack on, 363. Yeah, I've only got seven gold left. This is like a... Yeah. It seems to be a very... It's, this is like the shopping book. Yeah. It's like the book... I, I seem to have all the die by horrible deaths books. And you seem to have the... Uh, just going to do some shopping around a port. <laughs> yeah. A book. Bought a random rope and lantern I could have done without, to be fair. This is random now. If, in the middle of the street, you see a large manhole cover. If you wish to lift the manhole cover to see where it leads, turn to 48. If you're going to keep walking east, turn to 205. Oh, let me go down. Try and find a hag, I think. Ah, oh, yeah. See if there's a hag living in the sewer. <laughs> a like sewer that. hag. 48. Or a sewer tattooist hag would be nice. There is an iron ladder secured to the rim of a hole descending into the tunnel below. Mm-hmm. Rim. It is it is dark and a very unpleasant smell rises from below. Do you climb down the ladder or do you put the manhole back and continue east? Let's climb down the ladder. Mm. Three, two, one. Stinky hag hair is what I'm after. <laughs> yeah, you are. You've got your own little bit of stinky hag hair on your head, haven't you? I washed my hair this morning, thank you very much. Okay, some clean hag hair. And it's it's less hag hair and more like kind of stringy corpse hair. Stringy corpse <laughs> hair. <laughs> At the bottom of the ladder you realise, much to your disgust, that you are standing in a sewer. Hold on, that's pretty surprise. fucking obvious. Surprise, surprise. There are torches along the tunnel wall giving it a very dim light and droplets of water make eerie sounds as they fall into the sewage water. Do you walk north along the tunnel or south along the tunnel? Oh, Jesus Christ. Can I just not go... Um, let's, go let's go back. We cut it south because that's back, back on myself. You don't often get to go back on yourself, so let's go one south. 118. 118, 118. Yeah, 118, 118. Got your number. Uh, you can hear some scratching sounds in the tunnel ahead. Then you see a long shadow appear on the curved brick wall. Hag, hag, hag. In the dim hag, light, you hag, can just make out hag. the large shape of something black and shiny moving towards you. Hag. The scratching becomes louder, and you can also hear clicking sounds. The monster is only a couple of meters ahead of you when you recognize it as a giant centipede. Oh, it's not a hag. Do you possess an insect bracelet? No. Nope. Turn to 166. Ah. I think you're about to fight a centipede, my man. Ay, 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 ay. You will have to swing your sword with all your might to pierce the armor like shell of this monster. Skill 10, stamina 5. Ooh, he's got better skill than me. This is a, this is a nasty piece of work, this giant centipede. Let's do it. 15. 14. Come on, need some high rolling here. 18. That is a B E A beautiful 20. Oh, well done, you. I'll spend a luck point, do another bit of damage. Bloody hell, you're in your lot of points. What's his health? Five. Five. He's yeah, down so to two now. If it's on two, that makes sense. Uh, 18 again. Seven plus nine is 16. Uh-oh. And I've lost my scorpion badge. 
14. 15. Oh, down to 10. You're about to get eaten by a centipede in the sewer. Looking for a hag. <gasps> 19. No, no. Oh, 11. 17. 21. Jesus Christ. Down to 8. Come on. One big roll. All right. Someone hit a, D a, a, a exclamation D12 yeah, for on. me. Jaunty Goblin, are you still here? Do you want to roll for me? You roll for the centipede. Oh, Put okay. exclamation D12 in chat to roll for the centipede. If you're still here. Oh, that's a good one as well. 6 plus 5 is 11 plus 9. 20. I don't know. Oh. Boom. Roll Dump. 2. Snake uh, eyes. 12. Yep, so that's it. You beat the centipede. Yeah. I possibly I the, have some meals. I don't meals. know if the, the jaunty goblin is still here, but if he is, then you can make the next roll for me, man. Good man. Uh, if you win, turn to 272. Well done, sir. I might sit in a sewer and have some dinner in a minute. Yeah, he gave you a bit of a beating, didn't he? The didn't he centipede. just? You managed to squeeze yourself between the dead centipede and the roof of the tunnel. Hag. You walk, you walk further down the tunnel and see that it ends at an iron grill. Through which the sewage water runs. Oh, oh uh, there he is, the jointly goblin. The time delays just caught up with us. Uh, if better. you wish to try to remove the grill, turn to 377. If you wish to walk back to the entrance hole, turn to 174. Uh, you get the next roll, jaunty goblin. Don't let me forget. Give me a shout out when we get to the next time I need to roll. First thing I do is have some dinner whilst I'm surrounded with the shit of the City of Thieves. Oh, maybe the jaunty goblin knows if you if you're well, a fighting fantasy, um, you know, veteran. We've been we've been working our way through this. We're on the fifth book now. One thing we haven't been able to find in any of the rules is, do, can we just eat our provisions when we want? Like, do we have to wait for the book to instruct us? Because there was in the very first book it say you may eat some provisions. So we went rolled with that, and then every subsequent book hasn't ever had that in it. So we've just been eating them at at our leisure. Let, let us know when the time delay catches up if you if you're aware of that or whether I've just whether we've just not read the back pages of the book properly. And in the meantime, I'm going to squeeze Andy through the grill. Three seven seven. Yes, please. Be a bit weird to go through all of that and then not try and see what's after the grill. Before I go any further, three seven seven three seven seven. Everyone remember that. I'm just going to top my glass of wine up. Won't be a set. Okay, I'll write down three seven seven. This has gone a bit off piece because we're now going south against against north. Usually, with all the other ones, apart from the weird planet one, we continued north. North was where the answer was. Right. Whereas this one's just turned back down south of the sewer. So I'm kind of hoping we find something and then go back up. It'll go, and then you come out of the sewer and go north. George Goblin says, yeah, you can. Yeah, so we've been playing it right then. That's good. That's That's reassured me. Uh, okay. The iron grill is securely bolted to the brick wall and you are unable to remove it. However, above the grill, you notice a dark recess where some of the bricks have been removed from the wall. It is too dark to see deep inside the recess. Oh. If, you, if you wish to put your hand into the dark hole, <laughs> turn 92. If you rather walk back to the entrance, turn to 174. Oh. Chat. And do I fist the hole or do I go back the way I came? Answers on the postcards. <laughs> oh, wait for the time delay, wait for the time delay. And um, does that say always be fisting? <laughs> That's what, yeah. Have his vote. <laughs> Let me put. All four fingers and a thumb into the hole, please. Rightio, turn to 92. Lose my hand. <laughs> yeah, you're about to get it bitten off by another... By yeah. the wife of the giant centipede. Centipede babies. <laughs> you are slowly feeling your way along the bricks when your hand comes into contact with a smooth, flat object. You pull it out and see that you are holding a mirror. You Ooh. pack it away and walk back to the entrance. Oh, crap, that's not a, anything to do with what I want. No. Mirror. Great. <clears throat> Maybe I can uh, sell it. 
Oh, right. Yeah, you're, just, you're leaving the sewer, basically, because it's telling me to take you back north or out. What, so north along the sewer or out? Yeah. Oh, no, uh, are you going south along the sewer right now? Yeah, so I can go back up north to the entrance, but then it also gave the option to go north on the sewer as well. Yeah. So I will go north along the sewer still, in case there's a little hag hut. Three, five, six. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a sewer where you find a hag. I don't know, I always felt like hags were sort of in a in a cottage in the woods. <laughs> in, a, in a gingerbread cottage? Yeah, that, that feels haggy to me. Gingerbread sewer. Uh-oh. Yeah, north down the sewer, what have I found this time? Another centipede. centipede. Ahead you hear the sound of squealing and frantic splashing. Long shadows are cast by moving objects coming towards you. You can see the sleek, glistening shapes of three giant rats only metres in front of you. You draw your sword hastily and fight each of the rats in turn. Aye, aye, aye. First rat, 4-4. Four, four. Second rat, 5-4. Third rat, 5-5. Five, five. All right, let's do the first one first. 4-4. Four, four. Hang on. Let me just make a note of the stuff. 4 sure. Right, uh, here we go then. Georgie Goblin, you're up. First roll for rat number one, please. Exclamation D12. That's a poor roll. It's a 13. Mirror. All that faffing for a bloody mirror. <laughs> you never know. The hag might be like, uh, give me a mirror and I'll give you some of my hair or something. Yeah, true. I don't know if he's still here. He or she may have moved on. Hmm. 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 You roll. All right. Oh, oh there he is. A two. Roll the oh, two. Man. Uh, that's just a six. Well done. Excellent. Two damage on that. Yeah, the time delay is big. Are you uh, out in North America, Jaunty Goblin, maybe? Oh, that's right. a better roll. I'll make the next one. Uh, 18. Oh, yeah, no, forget about it. First rat d- didn't go. Uh, second rat, then. Five. Five, four, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's another decent roll. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 18 six, again. Seven, eight. Uh, 13 this time. Takes rat number two down to two life. Oh, snake eyes. 11. Oh, I've just got snake eyes as well. What are the odds of that? We both roll two ones at the same time. Yeah. What's the chances? Big delay. Sorry, guys. Yeah, don't worry about it, Jaunty Goblin. No, no danger. No danger. I'm in no rush to get anywhere. Are you, mate? No. Uh, goblin number three is five five. Uh, goblin, sorry. Um, I've got Jaunty Goblins on the brain now. Uh <laughs> It's uh, rat number three. Al, are you still here? Do you want to roll this one? Exclamation D12. 18 again. Let's see if Al's still here. You say 18 again? Yeah. Three, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, even if if even if we rolled a full 12, it could never have won, could it? Yeah, the, the, the old roller's doing quite poorly at the moment, isn't it? Twos yeah. and threes. Uh, six, uh, seven, eight. Five, 13. Four, 14. Oof. Down to one life. One more. Seven. Five, so 16. Six, seven. Yeah. Done. Killed all three of the giant rats. Easy. Uh, 10 to 28. I killed a dragon, mate. Three rats ain't going to do much problems for me. <laughs> While you were fighting the giant rats, you thought you saw someone or something skulking in the shadows ahead. Hag, 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 hag. All right. Are you gonna continue forward then? Yes. Two six five. No, he can't. He can't heal now. Uh, have he? He's, um, he traded the scorpion for the silver arrow, didn't he? Yeah. Two six five. That that benefit is uh, out of the picture now. Uh, with your sword still dripping with the blood of the rats, you walk further along the tunnel. The ledge you are walking along is narrow and slippery, and you have to tread carefully so as not to fall into the slow-flowing sewage. The tunnel gradually bends round to the right, and as you follow it round, the silence is suddenly shattered by the sound of running feet 
and a wailing scream. Coming straight at you, wild-eyed, with flailing arms and contorted face, uttering demon sorcery, is a white-haired old woman dressed in rags. She is a hag! Yes! Do you possess a potion of mind control? No! If you do, turn to 82. If you do not, turn to 390. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Hag. I think I'd like to welcome you to uh, the Andromeda uh, <laughs> Stabface's uh, barbershop. I will do you a <laughs> lovely deal on a uh, short back and sides for just a lock of your hair. But I don't have a potion of mind control, I am afraid. No, here we go then. The hag is conjuring a spell which instills terrible fear in you. Your mind is full of illusions and you think you are being burned alive with a crowd of skeletal faces looking on gleefully. Flipping heck. You swing your sword around blindly, trying to hack at the faces laughing at you. Test your luck. What's my luck on eight? One, if you're lucky, two, three, six, one, eight, if you're lucky your sword cuts into the hag. If you're unlucky, you merely cut the air. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I've got eight, and my luck's eight. Uh, yeah, it was equal or less equal than that, wasn't less. it? Let me just check. Let me just double check. Do check that. Do check. Uh... Need to grab her by her hair. Hang on. See, our new sewer hag. Yeah, yeah. So, what's next on the list? The lotus flower. Yeah, Go equal to or less than. You're all right. You're all right. Uh, so, you've cut into the hag. One, four, four. One, that four, candle one. shop might have had lotus flowers. Might have been a little bit hasty with my uh, not going into. <laughs> That, that small child dying in the roadside might have had some lotus flowers. Who knows? Too this is late. going to be like that one. What was that one? Um, I can't remember which book it was. I got all the way to the end and then just fell out of a window. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> the hag screams as your sword cuts deep into her arm. Her concentration is lost and the spell is broken. Hey. Your, mind, your mind clears and you are able to face her with your senses acute again. From out of her clothing, the hag pulls a dagger with a long blade. You're eager to fight her. She's a 7-7. Seven, seven. She's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Here right. we go. I don't, I don't want to fight her. I just need to grab her by her hair and pull some hair out. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 12. 17. Oh, it's on the slippery slope again, down to 10. Oh, that one's cocked. Let me re roll that one. Eighteen. Uh, four plus seven, eleven. Boom. Takes her down five. Ooh, that's not oh, good. Four, eleven again. Nineteen. Candle shop guy is a creep. <laughs> oh, did you go to the candle shop on your playthrough? <laughs> uh, six, seven, eight. Oh, plus... six, fifteen. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twenty. Hell. Hang on, uh, I'm down to one life here. Tell you what, last, these last Ministry of Dice Dice, they roll well. They really. Uh, okay, uh, who's out and about? Who's out and about in chat? Um, Javier, um, Cardjack, give us an exclamation D12 for the final roll. If you oh, fail so this I one. I, I thought I did it. No, you got one left, haven't you? Oh, no, that's fine. No, so no, no. 753 down to one now. <laughs> Good rolling, thank you very much. Oh, my word. Six plus right. nine, fifteen. Well, that's a foregone conclusion, isn't it? Thank you very much. That roller. Uh, if you, wi if you win, well. turn to three, three o oh, three. Three o oh, three. You Hag. can badge your way home on the three o oh, three. Don't you live near the three o oh, three? Isn't that down south somewhere? What is it? The three o oh, three. Jocelyn wants to roll something. Okay, Jocelyn, you shall have the next roll. I promise. You bend over the motionless body of the dead hag and you cut off a tuft of her hair with your sword. Tick. You put the hair safely in your backpack and walk back down the tunnel to the entrance. Turn to 104. Back in. I knew it was worthwhile going to Sable Street and fighting a uh, centipede for a mirror and some hair of an old lady. So what else do you need now? You got. Uh, you need lotus the lotus flowers flower and the tattoo. And the tattoo. Okay. Can no, I eat okay. some provisions, please? Yes, by all means. 
14. Beautiful. Uh, right, back up into the street, 205. After replacing the manhole cover, you set off east again. Oh, do I? Everything seems a little too quiet, and you begin to feel nervous. East. Ahead, you see that Stable Street turns sharply to the left. Uh, you can walk around the corner, or you can walk back to the junction into Tower Street. Uh, let's go back to Tower Street. Tower Street, 127. Yep, just ahead of you three men are involved in a fight the two younger men appear to be attacking an older man with iron bars uh, do you help the old man or do you avoid the brawling men and continue north does he look like a florist or a, or a tattoo artist does it does it explain that no it does not you have no further information than the phrase older man go on let's help him here we go. Good Samaritan. That's what we like to see. You've robbed some pirates and now you're helping an old man. I did leave a small child to die on the side of a road. Yeah, but he was already kind of on his way anyway. What else yeah. could you have done? You're not, you're, yeah. not a, you're not a doctor. It was a trap. You draw, it's a trap. Uh, you draw your sword and rush to help the old man. He's lying on the ground and the other two men are beating him and trying to take his leather bag. You call out and they turn to attack you. They are described here as robbers as well. Which robbers. However, they're pretty hardcore. We've got a 7 8 and an 8 6 here. Oh, shit. Fight them one at a time. Can I take the 8 6 on first, please? 8 6 on first. Okay. Jocelyn, you're up. Yes, with that roller. Happy days. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Exclamation D1, please. Right. So let's roll. So skill nine plus seven is sixteen. We'll wait for the Canadian time delay now. Blame Canada. Exclamation D twelve. Jocelyn, please. Thank you very much. Uh, oh wow, good roll. Fix them down to four. I'll take the next one. Five, 12. 13. Uh, who else is knocking around in chat? And the Ferris broadcast, are you still here? 19. Let's have a quick look at It'd be handy if like Twitch would have a little thing on it that says like your time delay is six seconds or something. Yeah, I don't know if he's still here. Right, I'll roll this one then. Cool. I've got 19. 19? Yeah. Uh, I've just rolled a 9 plus 8. What's that? That's 19 as well, isn't it? No, 17. 17. Take 2. Uh-oh. One more hit on this big dude. Fifteen. Six, seven, eight, plus eight. Sixteen. Ooh. Oof. Uh, 10. Come on, big rolls, big rolls. 8, Six, 17. Seven plus 8. Nope. That's uh, one battered robber. The next robber is 7, seven eight. 8. It's the big dude. We've got 11, 11 viewers right now. Uh, exclamation D12. First one past the post gets the next roll. 13. It's going to need, it doesn't need a big one. Six, six plus seven. Thirteen. Oh, a draw. A draw. Okay. I'll take the next one. Oh, six, snake nine. eyes. Eighteen. Nine. All right, down Eight to six down health. Two. Uh, I've just rolled eleven. Seven. Eighteen. Sixteen. <sighs> Takes me down to eight. Tough couple of robbers, these. Yeah. Come on. Uh, I've just rolled 11 again. <laughs> 18. 16. Down to 6. Holy moly. You're going to get killed helping an old man in the street. Isn't it? 4, 5, 6, 7. 14 this time. Oh, 
that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's nineteen. Okay, down to four. Six, seven, eight, fifteen. Another nineteen. Oof. Right, final roll. Uh, let's give it to. Uh, I don't know who's about, who's that, who's been pretty active in chat. jordan has gone, honey. Um, Javier, give us a roll. Uh, go on, yeah, card chat. Final roll. Win this. Fourteen. And we stay alive. Fourteen. I've got. We've got a nine plus the seven. Sixteen. It puts me down a four. Wow. I'll take this next roll. Uh, five, six, seven for me. Fourteen. And seven plus nine. Sixteen. Oof, there we go. Defeated the other robber. But that was co that was a costly battle. Won it, Jast. Costly battle. If you win, turn to 51. I'm on four health. I'm going to have to eat some provisions. Get Does Death send sorted. you back to the start, or are you wandering the age old fighting fantasy cheating or just cheating in some way? No, we've uh, so we've been dying when we die, and uh, the our plan that we've discussed with some of the other regulars here who have joined us tonight is that we keep playing through, keep playing through, keep playing through, and that's, um, then we go back and replay the books that we failed at, which at this moment in time has been <laughs> has been every book. Yeah, although we've got some non-fighting fantasy ones lined up as well. I've got some of uh, Way of the Tigers and what's the other one we got upstairs? I've been packing, so I haven't got them. I uh, can't remember. Yeah, so we've been dying when we die, uh, with and they're making a note that it needs a replay, um, so that we can. But what we're not immediately replaying it. We're going to leave it a bit. Also, we've been taking it in turns to play the character. Uh, Jaunty Goblin. So we've, um, so we're trying to, so we maybe do a switcher room. So you know, we're just keeping the stream going for as long as we can, basically. Uh, you walk over to the old man and help him to his feet. He is very grateful and offers to buy you a drink at the nearby tavern. I'll take that. Yeah, uh, three, two, five. Can I um, eat some food before we go to the tavern? Yes, I suppose so. Why not? Can I eat three meals? <laughs> I don't. I don't see why not. If, you, okay. if, you, if you're that hungry. Four, eight, twelve. That puts me back up to sixteen. That puts me more survivable. How many provisions have you got left now, then? Four. Dun dun dun. Take an absolute beating. You follow the old man through the swinging doors of the Hog and Frog Tavern. He tells you to sit down at the small table in the corner while he shuffles over to the bar to get the drinks. There are several shifty-looking characters sitting at nearby tables, but they don't seem interested in you. Rohypno. Soon the old man comes back to the table carrying two wooden mugs filled to the brim with cider. Once seated, he opens his leather bag and places two small pots on the table. Lotus flowers. Tattoo ink. He opens one and rubs the white cream in the pot on his wounds. He smiles and tells you he's a chemist by trade Ooh. and that you should rub some of the cream on your wounds too. You take his advice and are surprised to feel the healing effect of the cream work quickly. Add five stamina points. Oh, I should have been a little bit... A bit hasty on the old dinner there, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, well, I was just so used to the fact to go to the tavern and get face raped, lose eight flipping... Stamina. So anyway, I'm back up. I'm fine. You leave the tavern and head north. Turn to three, four, eight. Has he got any lotus flowers? Or no, nope, nothing. He bought you a drink and that and healed you up, and that's the end of that. Where am I going? East or north? Still. Uh, oh, I've flicked on already. Head north. Okay. North. North. That's fine. North is good. Tower Street makes a sharp turn to the right, going east between tall buildings. An iron bridge crosses overhead between two other buildings, and you see movement on it. Small cloaked people carrying laden sacks between the buildings are apparently in a great hurry. If you wish to call out to them, turn to 251. If you want to walk under the bridge and continue east, turn to 30. Oh, it goes over a bridge. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's call out to the little... Um... To the worker people. Jawas. What did he... One of the small people stop and look down at you. 
he mistakes you for a town guard and calls out to his accomplices to run for cover. They is up to no good, these, these little people. Uh, then he points a short crossbow at you and fires a bolt. Test your luck. Ow. Oh. Prick. Right, what's my luck? Eight. Ten. Fail. Uh, the bolt lodges deeply in your shoulder. Turn to 330. Ow. Is it silver? Can I keep it? <laughs> Lose three stamina points. Oh, Jesus. If you're still alive, you manage with great pain to pull the bolt out from your shoulder. As you bandage your wound, the little man runs off to the building on your left. Uh, there does not appear to be an easy way to catch him, so you walk onto the bridge and continue east. You might as well have just carried on. <laughs> yeah. 30. However, you know that there's some shenanigans going on in these two tall buildings. Tower Street soon ends at a junction where it meets Stable Street, running north and south. You decide to go north. No decision. It's just telling you you're going north. To your left, you see a large wooden barn set back from the houses. Two horses are tied to a post outside the barn and smoke rises from a crooked, crooked chimney on top of its low flat roof. You can walk through the barn or continue north. Through the barn, where they through the barn. grow lotus flowers. Of... 25. You soon realise you are in a stable where you see a large, bare-chested man wearing a grubby white apron busy at work at an open fire. He takes a red-hot iron bar from the fire with his gloved hand and starts to hammer into the shape of a shoe horseshoe on his anvil. Sweat pours from his brow as he toils with the hammer. Will you make conversation, attack him, or leave him to his labours and continue north? Make conversation seems true just to attack him. 169. Unlike the pirates, who you viciously and brutally robbed and... I hate pirates. It's, it's mm. said that I hate pirates. Slave traders. <clears throat> the blacksmith removes his gloves and wipes his hands on his apron before asking you what you want. You answer by asking if he makes anything besides horseshoes. He replies that in his spare time he enjoys making chain mail coats. Oh, I'll have some of that. In fact, it has become quite a, prof a profitable sideline of his, especially in a place like Port Blacksand. He tells you in great detail of the skill and labour that goes into making one and finally inquires if you're interested in buying one. They're not cheap. You may pay 20 gold pieces for a chainmail coat. Can't afford it. I only got seven gold pieces. All right, in which case then, you will leave the stables. 115. Has he got any flowers? He has not. You can either buy the chainmail coat or piss off. Oh, I'd like to piss off, please. <laughs> Fire hot tattoo, yeah. A unicorn in the sun burnt into your forehead. <laughs> Coming towards you as fast as he is able is a man in tattered rags with a ball and chain attached to his leg. He is exhausted and collapses in your arms. His face is dirty and unshaven. With great difficulty, he manages to speak, saying, Please cut me free. The town guards are not far behind me. I have been locked in a dungeon for two years, but managed to tunnel my way out. I was robbed and unable to pay my taxes, so Lord Azur ordered I should be jailed for five years. Please help me. Farther up the street, you hear shouting voices, and then armed men come into view. If you want to cut through his chains with your sword, turn to 90. If you want to hand him over to the town guards, turn to 274. I'll hand him over to the town guards, please. Whoa! Brutal, man. There might be a reward. Do you know what? This place, Port Blacksands, right? Like, round here where I live, I'm just like, I go to Tesco's, buy some milk and bread, stop at the chemist, get a prescription, come home, watch telly, go to bed. In Port Blacksand, you can't like move two meters without someone accosting you or firing an arrow at you or begging or trying to get you convince you to anyway well, no, right. nobody has a normal day it's Just a place a standard... of drama yeah the guards are pleased that you have caught their wanted man they tell you that he is an escaped murderer hmm? see the chief guard hands you five gold pieces hey, saying, here's that's your exactly reward. what I was after 
But you won't be getting another one because he won't be escaping again. You watch for a short while as they lead the shouting murderer away before <laughs> caught, continuing north along Stable Street. Turn 222. See? Instincts. I knew he was a bad egg. <laughs> His spider senses were going off. On the right-hand side of the houses are separated from a street. What? On the right-hand side? Oh, hang on. On the right-hand side, the houses are separated from the street by a wooden fence with shrubs, trees, bushes, and flowers behind it. <gasps> flowers. There is a turnstile in the middle of the fence, by the side of which it says, Public Gardens, entry fee, one gold piece. If you wish to go into the gardens, turn to 370. Yes, please. I knew you'd say that. I'm not going to pay, though. You place the coin in the ah, slot okay. <laughs> and walk through the turnstile. Although the flowers and shrubs are not outstanding, you are nevertheless surprised that such a place exists in Port Black Sand. The gardens are not very large, extending back some 60 metres to where some houses back onto them. There are two paths to follow, one of which runs around the edge of the gardens and one that leads directly into the centre where there is some topiary, to topiary, 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 topiary. Each shrub has been cut into the shape of an animal, and you decide to take a closer look. The path leads into a small paved area surrounded by animal-shaped shrubs. In the middle, there is a stone plinth upon which sits a large earthen bowl containing lotus flowers. That's what I'm talking about. There is a painted sign which reads, Do not pick the flowers. The gardener is nowhere to be seen and there is nobody else about. Do you risk picking one of the flowers or do you leave the gardens and continue north? I'm going to have a meal because I think right. these, these animals are about to come to life. Sure. And then I'm going to pick a flower because I need a flower. All right. That is my prediction that these animals are going to come to life and attack me, this magical topiary. <laughs> as soon as you pluck one of the flowers, you hear the noise of rustling leaves. Three of the animal-shaped hedges have uprooted themselves and are closing in on you. Predictable. Do you have a ring of fire? Oh, of course I don't. Turn to 191. Oh no, they're just going to kill me now. You draw your sword and defend yourself against the advancing <laughs> leaf beasts. Leaf beasts. They all attack you at once, seemingly trying to crush and smother you. Treat the leaf beasts as a single creature. 6-6. Six, six. Let me... Let me just turn to a new page. Uh, who's still about? Uh, let's just go for first one past the post can do the first roll for me on the leaf beasts. Six, 15. Exclamation D12. There you go. See, Javier always seems to get there. Over in Ireland there. Eight plus six. He's on 14. I'm on 16. Well, uh, good roll, Javi, but... No cigar. Right, I'll make. I'll take the next roll. It's Fifteen. Five. Uh, yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. Down to two. Sixteen. Uh, six, seven, eight. Plus six is fourteen. That is a defeated leaf beast. You um, run back to the turnstile, clutching the lotus, and make your getaway into Stable yes. Street. Right, so I, st I wonder if I still need to grind it if I have to find a grind a grinder or something. But yeah, you got to mix it all up into a thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, ground. What's left to get then? So you got the got the arrow. I've got the black pearls. I've got the hag hair, and I've got the lotus flower. All I need is the tat. Is the what? Tattoo. Oh, the tattoo. Of course, yeah. So I'm going to predict that I can go north. The street ends at a junction with Mill Street which runs east and west along the city wall. Looking east, you see a group of town guards marching towards you and decide to walk quickly west along Mill Street. Okey-doke. On your left, you see a narrow lane, and ahead of you, 
you see a young lad coming towards you pushing a barrow laden with fruit. If you wish to walk down the lane, turn to 182. If you want to buy some fruit, turn to 160. I'll go down the marrow, marrow lane, please. Barrow. 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 Bar, Sorry, Mar I said it all northern. Barrow lane. Barrow lane. Barrow lane. Not narrow yeah. lane, but a barrow lane. No, yes. you're right. It's narrow lane. It's me being a dick. I would like to go down the narrow tattoo artist lane, please. <laughs> oh, shit, man. The lane ends at a small shop. Oh, yes. On the glass plane door is painted a sign, Jimmy Quick Tint, best tattooist in town. Hey, yeah, baby. A tiny bell rings as you push the door open and a fat man wearing purple smiles silk, smiles in greeting. Everyone's in purple silk around these parts. You are surprised to see that his arms, hands, feet and even his face are completely covered in colourful tattoos. Here you go, here's a... Here's a hey, Jimmy Quick Tint. Uh, no. That page there. there you go. Oh, hang on. I'm mirrored. There you go. Mirror. I've got a mirror. Here you guys. Um, he grins and says, practice what you preach. You tell him that you require a yellow sun to be tattooed on your forehead with a white unicorn in the center. Stick. He replies, it's a simple task, but costs you 10 gold pieces. Have you got, got it? 11. I've got 11. Turn to 279. Tattoo my forehead. He takes the money and motions you to sit on a wooden stool. After a long and painful process of repeatedly pricking your forehead with a sharp needle, he applies the incredible ink. You look in a mirror on the wall and find your new appearance somewhat strange. You shrug your shoulders and leave the shop and walk back up the lane into Mill Street. 307. Looking like a twat. Pardon me, that's the red wine. I apologise. Speaking of the red wine. Let's do this. Right, I need to get myself to uh, this dude's lair uh, after sunset. No. Walking to... Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got to yeah, be at night. Sunset. Yeah. Walking towards you along the street are two huge guards wearing the black uniform of Lord Azur. As they get closer, you see that they are trolls, brutal mercenaries employed by Lord Azur as Imperial Elite Guards. To your right, there is a tree which reaches almost to the top of the city wall. Do you risk walking past the trolls, or do you climb the tree in order to get over the wall? I climb the tree, get over the wall, please. All right. Over to 11. What you played as the cowards. The trolls see what you are doing and oh. run towards the tree. You are forced to leave your shield behind. Oh, well, it's never been that much use anyway. Lose one skill point. Oh, tits. Okay. After climbing quickly up the tree, you realise you must jump a distance of two metres between the branch and the top of the wall. Easy. Do you have a potion of levitation? Do a bollocks. I'm joking. That's what happened to me. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> If you are wearing a chainmail coat, you will have to take it off in order to jump safely across the wall. Lose two skill points. Oh my god, that puts me down to skill six. Below you see the two trolls running around the tree waving their swords. There is no alternative but to jump. Do I lose Three... two skill points if I take off my chainmail? Or is that just an extra lose two skill points? Oh, hang on, as... let me reread it. If you're wearing a chainmail coat, you'll have to take it off in order. Uh, yeah, that looks like it's two skill points if you lose the chainmail coat. All right, well, I didn't have one in the first place, so happy Yeah, days. all right. Three, five, eight. I'm still at eight. That's not too bad. You still may plummet to your depth yet. <laughs> it's a close shave, but you just managed to grip the edge of the wall with your fingertips. You pull yourself up and climb onto a stone walkway along the top of the city wall. On either side of you are stone towers rising above the battlements, spaced some hundred metres apart. There are doors in the towers, both of which are suddenly flung open as more guards run out oh, to capture you. For sake. There is a 20 metre drop on the other side of the wall. Will you jump to your freedom, fix a climbing rope to the wall and climb down? I've got a rope. 
or face at the oncoming guards. I'll take the rope, please. Turn to 108. Oh my god, you are the jammiest wanker alive. <laughs> Tick. Let me put a line through rope. Oh my days. I've still got this skeleton key as well. I'm sure that, that'll come in handy. You lower yourself slowly to the ground. Above you, the guards are waving their fists at you from the battlements. You are now outside Port Black Sand. Do you have all the necessary items required to slay the Night Prince? I think I do, yeah. I've got the Black Pearl, the Hag, the Lotus Flower, and I've got the tattoo. Turn to 201. Here you go. This is a bit of a long section now. Are you ready? Yeah. Following Nicodemus' map, you start your long walk north to the guarded tower of Zanbar Bone, the Night Prince. You walk through the woods and fields. You are able to relax a little in the pleasant countryside and breathe the fresh air with its wonderful scents. Ah, lovely. Have a chill. Picnic. As the light fades, you decide to camp under a huge elm tree. You cook a meal of stewed rabbit and mushrooms before settling down to a long, deep sleep. Add two stamina points. In the morning, you look around for a yew tree and cut a long branch from it, which you make a bow to fire the silver arrow. <laughs> Good. As you test the bow for accuracy, you are suddenly aware of a white dove sitting on a low branch nearby. There is a small piece of paper attached to its foot, which lets you remove, which it lets you remove without flying off. There is a message on the paper which reads, Dear friend, I am afraid I must be getting too old to be of use to anybody. I regret that I have misinformed you about the compound needed to kill Sam Bard's own. Bellend. You must only use two of the three ingredients I told you, but I cannot remember which two. I can only suggest you try the hag's hair and black pearls together, or the hag's hair and the lotus flower together, or the black pearl and the lotus flower together. Apologies. Good luck, Nicodemus. So what's that? So, 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 Do you want me to repeat that? Hag's hair and black pearl. Hag's hair and lotus flower, or lotus flower and black pearl. Well remembered. Thank you very much. You throw the message on the ground and curse. Twat. You change your mind a dozen times before making a decision. Finally, you make your choice and grind the two ingredients together on a flat stone. You place the compound in a leather pouch, hoping you have made the correct decision. It doesn't, even, it doesn't give you a choice right now. You set off again, but it is not long before you, your surroundings become less welcoming. The trees are twisted or stunted and there are no birds to be heard. You must be approaching the domain of the Night Prince. Suddenly to your left you hear a rustling and grunting in the bush. It is a wandering monster which has been attracted by your scent. Roll one die and consult the table below to see which creature has appeared. Oh, Fight this creature as usual. Jocelyn, if you're still there... Exclamation D6, you may chew, You may roll for the creature. Yeah. So what is not said is what two ingredients you decided to put together. I was going to ask you right at the end, after you rubbed it in, what ones have you chosen? And then go to that. Uh, that roll the two. That. It's a giant snake. 6-6. Six, six. Thank you, Jocelyn. I'll take that. Right, here we go. All right. Five, six, seven, plus a six. Thirteen. Uh, Seventeen. Okay. Very good. Down to four on the giant snake. Count yourself lucky you didn't get the cave troll. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ooh, eighteen. Ooh, ten, sixteen. Oh, even a good roll is no good. Last one. Oh, four, ten. Fifteen. There we go. That's one dead giant snake. If you win, turn to one, three, eight. You are smashing this one, mate. Boom. And if you fought any other creature, turn to two, eight, three. Oh, my goodness. Two, eight, three. 
There is nothing useful to be found on the dead creature, so you decide to press on northwards, 217. Seventeen. You walk all day until you reach the hill shown on Nicodemus's map, upon which the Night Prince's tower stands. All is quiet, and there is an unpleasant smell of decay in the air. Shadows start to creep along the ground as the moon rises into the night sky, and you see the foreboding silhouette shape of Zambar Bones Tower pointing up into the sky like a black finger. You check all your possessions before drawing your sword and marching towards the arched wooden entrance. Suddenly you hear a shrill howl and swing round to see two pairs of eyes staring at you. They belong to moon dogs. Zambar Bones trained killer hounds. Fight them one at a time. 9, 10 and 11, 9. 9, 10 and 11, 9. Let's take out the... Uh... Christ, they're stronger than me. 11-9-1 first. The 11 9 one first, okay. 6-9 plus 11, 8, uh, 20. 8 plus 8, 16. Oof. Yeah. 6. Eight, 17. 16. Oh, mate, this is going to be disaster. Oh, snake eyes. 13. Uh, so, 15. Uh, Andy, uh, the uh, hashtag competitive wife has just walked through the door. Hello. She's been on the wine as well. Where my camera is pointing, the viewers can't see it, but you should be able to see her. Just giving you a... Hi. Hi. <laughs> so that's one off me, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and I will use a luck point to take another one off. Ooh, cheeky. So cheeky. Put you down to six. Uh, 21. Oh, Jesus. I don't think I can get that. I could. Six, seven plus eight. That is six. That's 15. Another one done. 13. I've just rolled 22. <laughs> Jesus, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7, 17. This is, let's this give is... you a chance. Let's give you a chance and see if someone in chat can... Uh, let's have an exclamation D12. Uh, Jaunty Goblin, are you still about? Do you want to take this roll? I've got a decent one as well. Exclamation D12 in chat. That's because uh, this uh, dice roller doesn't do so good, so maybe that will give Andy a bit of a chance. There's a second moon dog who's nine twelve right now. Oh, Jocelyn jumped in there. Jocelyn jumped in and rolled a one. Thank you very <laughs> much. So I'll take take it down a four. It's nine twelve. It's nine ten. The other one, isn't it? It's not nine twelve. Nine ten. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I just had a moment. Right. I've just rolled nine, uh, 20. 16. It's going to take how, some. How much life have you got left? I have oh, nine life left. Oh, Jaunty Goblin's just rolled a three, so that's 14. Seven, 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 seven plus eight is 15. 15. Down to two. It's the last roll. It's the last roll. Uh, six plus eleven, seventeen. My side. And then eighteen. Eighteen. That's one dog down. Jesus <laughs> Christ! This one's not as tough though. It's nine. Nine. Yeah, but I'm eight. It's still got the jump on me. Uh, four plus nine, thirteen. Eight plus eight is sixteen. It takes me down to eight. Nine Five, plus uh, eight. 14. Nine plus eight is 17. <sighs> Down to six. Uh, let's do another one. Ooh, I'll use a luck point as well, get it down to five. 
Oh, cheeky maneuvers. I've just rolled six, seven, plus nine, uh, 16. Oh, I just got the floor, it's a six as well. Uh, what have we got here? Five, six, seven, eight, plus eight, 16. Is that, did you have 16 as well? 15. Uh, no, oh, okay. 16, yeah. 16 as well. Yeah. Draw. 16 again. Uh, six, nine, plus nine, 18. That puts me down to seven. Oof. I'm on five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 5 plus 9. 14 this time. Uh, 11 plus 8 is 19. Oof, I'm down I to 3. Another, I another point. Bring down take, me down to, take me down to 2. Okay, chat. Uh, first one past the post. Exclamation D12 for the final roll. Or maybe the final roll. I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten plus eight, eighteen. I'm confident. Let's see. Eighteen. Let's see who's first. Uh, let's just see who's first in chat. To give the time delay some uh, a minute to catch up. Anyone there? Anyone out there? Anybody? Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, Jocelyn through the gate. Roller one. <laughs> this this random roller is um, is officially bobbins. <laughs> <laughs> it saved my ass. Right, right there you go. If you win, turn to two five nine. Why can't I have just stayed in the village and just killed his moon dogs? Ah, is that because he's got because he's obviously got an unlimited supply of moon dogs. Oh, I don't oh. say that. I don't want any more. Can, I might need to eat my last food as well. You wipe the blood from your sword and walk into the wooden door. You try the handle, but it is locked. If you have a skeleton key... Yes, I fucking well do. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> right. It's uh, just all going to go wrong at the end. It's going to be the most annoying thing in the world. And then I'll just eight. rage quit and just, just disconnect and go up to bed. Yeah, this roll is rubbish, isn't it, Jocelyn? It's, uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't doing the business. I'm going to take the little moment before I open the door to have two provisions. All right. Leave me one meal left, but bringing me back up to uh, eight, uh -oh. nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. One What's meal that? left? Yeah, 15. What does it say? If you only have one meal left, take five damage. The key fits the lock, which clicks open as you turn it. You open the door and enter a beautiful marble-floored hallway. On three of the four walls hangs portraits of evil-looking men and women, but on the far wall hang two iron shields. The crest on one is a tower, and on the other is a unicorn. A spiral staircase leads you up from the centre of the hallway, centre of the hallway to the floor above. Will you take the shield with the tower crest, take the shield with the unicorn crest, or climb up the spiral staircase? What do you reckon? Unicorn, I think. Yeah, I mean, the whole there's a unicorn thing going on with the tattoo, isn't there? Well, you let's have a think. Tower might be like strength, might give me stamina. Unicorn, yeah, it's, I'm going unicorn. I've got a fucking unicorn tattoo on my forehead. It would make sense. Yeah, I could keep it afterwards. It would make it's, you know. If nothing else, it's, it coordinates. Yeah, exactly. Could, yeah, uh, three seven four. I could do with more skill points. Three seven. Four. Oh, here we go. The shield was taken from a goodly knight who died at the hand of Zambar Bone. That's promising. It was forged with good magic. Add one skill point. Ah, uh, that's what I'm not talking about. Back up to nine. You walk over to the spiral staircase with your new shield and climb to the floor above. More shit, please. I want like a... Swanky sword. It's going to go, do you have the sword from Owen at the start? No, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Looking up, you see that the staircase goes all the way up to the top of the tower. You stop off at the first floor and walk along the landing to a door. The door opens into a large room which contains a comfortable made-up bed. If you wish to lock the door and go to sleep for the night, turn to 288. 
If you wish to explore the tower further, turn to 77. No, because then I'll be attacking him during who, the day when he's in Who takes a sleep? Who takes a sleep in your Why? in your enemy's tower? That makes no sense. No. That would be alright. I'll just lock the door. <laughs> I don't I don't want to sleep, thank you very much. Danger's all around. I'll just lock the door. I just I'll be fine. Yeah. He, he won't have a key to his, his own bedroom. <laughs> Right, 77 then, carry on. You walk quietly back to the staircase and climb to the second floor. Again, there is a door at the end of the landing. If you wish to open the door, turn to 292. If you wish to climb up to the third floor, turn to 310. Do I really want to go into that room? No. I've got everything I need. I just need to kill the dude. Yeah? Um, what if he's in that room? All right, then, let's go check the room. Might be his bedroom. What, you find him <laughs> with his slippers and <laughs> and his dressing gown? Yeah, why yeah. not? Why not? Let's try it. Got his sweatpants on, you know what I mean? He's just been watching the latest season of 24 on Disney+. Plus. You walk into a lavishly furnished room containing objet d'art Ooh, objet and curios. D'art. Yeah. Standing before you is a young woman dressed in a black silk gown. Hello, darling. This feels like a bit of a trap. She has long black hair and bright red lips. She smiles. Is Elvira. She smiles and motions you to sit down in one of the armchairs. Mm. You refuse to sit down, only too aware that she is one of Zambar Bone's servants. She walks towards you, open-armed, as though she is about to embrace you. And when she smiles again, you see two fang-like teeth, which can only belong to a vampire. Oh, shit. If you have some garlic, turn to 254. If you do not have garlic, turn to 210. Don't have any garlic. No, you don't. Return to 210. Oh, there's that kid and his fruit. (laughs) The fruit and vegetable. You've got a mirror. I really wanted you to say that she had snake hair or something, like she was a Medusa, and I'd be like, yeah, I've got a fucking mirror for her. Can I lock her back in her room? I leg it. Her gaze is so hypnotic that you are unable to look away. You've got a mirror. You are defenceless and cannot resist <sighs> as she embraces you and slowly sinks her fangs into your neck to oh, drink for your fuck's blood. For sake. You drift into an unconscious sleep, and when you and awake, die. you are unaware of your previous existence. You have become a vampire yourself. No, no. Taxi backsies, I've got too far. <laughs> what do you think, chat? Chat, let him have the taxi back backsies. me up. Take what number was the last one? Can There's no way remember? I've gone through all of that. I can't remember what no the last number was. No way I've gone through was. all of that. Where was it? Do you remember? Have you been writing down the page numbers? Not for a while. We need to find where the door was. That's so um, Al says takes you back, see. He's giving yeah, you a taxi back. Yeah, takes you back, see. Thank you very much. There is no way after going through all of that hell, I open a door and die. That's the shittest thing Ian Livingstone can piss right off. Hang on. Right. But I don't, I've forgotten what page I was on just now. I've, I've completely lost my way. Do we allow this just once? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not for it, but I died falling from a tower one time. Can anyone remember the page numbers? Because I can't remember what it was on to do the takes you back to you, see. There was one towards the back here, wasn't there? That was... The last number I wrote down was 222, but that was back in the garden. That was ages ago, yeah. That's, that's no help. In exchange for some hot tub action. Jaunty Goblin says, yeah. God, uh, Javi seems up for it. Right, hang on. Moon Dogs. Turn to 259. I remember you fighting the Moon Dogs. the Moon Dogs. That is a ridiculous way to finish uh, that. Then you used the skeleton key, didn't you? 228. Yeah. We're back on track. I haven't been writing a map. I thought I was into uh, the end game. Took the uni- you took the unicorn, 374. Oof, we get another skill point because we're doing it again. Nope. Dang it. Uh, then you went up the staircase, 21. 
Ooh. Oh, wait a sec, guys. I'm just retreading my steps because I've, I've forgotten what the last. Uh... We could be we could be famous. Um, followers and viewers. Oh, Sounds 77. Brilliant idea. We're already famous. Speed 163. Be What did I just say? 21. Well, thanks for dropping in. Twenty. Just retracing the steps. That's right. Uh, you didn't sleep for the night, did you? So no. seventy-seven. Uh, if you wish to climb up to the third floor, turn to three ten. Yes, we're going to climb up Here to the go. third floor. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going down into no room with a vampire. Well, you might have been right if you had garlic. Yeah, true story. Uh, you see another door at the end of the landing. You can open that one, 263, or climb to the next floor, 65. Climb to the next door. I ain't doing that again. I've got everything I need for this fight. Don't distract me by doors. On the next floor, there are two doors adjacent to one another on the landing. One is painted white, and the other is painted black. Suddenly, a voice calls out from nowhere, saying, Oh, foolish adventurer. Why do you even consider it a remote possibility that you can defeat me, the almighty Zambar Bone? I am following your, following your every move, but you do not know where I am. Ha, ha, ha. Will you open the white door, open the black door, or carry on up the stairs? Carry on up the stairs. Not paint it black. No, no, he's at the top oh, of the tower. Just Bad the same paint of that. All right, turn to one nine seven. I've had it with opening doors. On the next landing, there is a door with a black tower carved in ebony attached to it. There is also a black suit of armor standing outside the door. Will you inspect the suit of armor, open the door, or carry on up the stairs? Up the stairs. Let's just get to the top. Two oh seven. I've got a silver arrow. I've got a bow. I've got the weird mixture that may or may not work, and I've got a tattoo on my forehead. I don't need anything else. The staircase ends at a door. You turn the handle slowly, and the door opens, much to your surprise. <laughs> I've had it with opening doors. <laughs> you turn the handle slowly, and the door opens. In uh, You walk outside onto the flat roof of the tower. Suddenly you are aware of movement in the sky and look up to see two large birds in the moonlight with long beats and talons swooping down on you. That's there is no bad. time to run for cover. You must fight the Death Hawks. Where's Zanzibar Bona? You're, you're facing the Death Hawks, mate. Oh, Death Hawk 1 is 4-5, four, Death Hawk 2 is 4-4. Four, four. Oh, but before we continue any further... I am sorry, folks, but I must take a red wine bathroom break. All right. I... What's that? I'll say that. It's a bit shit that you can lose because you didn't... When the rubber meets right. the road, it's just not... It's not... <laughs> a bit shit that you can lose because you didn't guess the right mixture through no fault of your own. Yeah, it's, it, that's what happens, though, isn't it? It's like I um, still can't get over plummeting to my death that time. Right, well, these, these death hawks should be pretty straightforward. They're 4-5 and 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. So we're going to get straight back into it, guys. No delay. Right. Let's go. Ten. Four plus nine. And that's 13. All right. Uh, oh, which one are you going for? The four, five or the four, four? Four, four. Four, four. He's down to two. Oh. Ah. Sixteen. Went in me. Uh, four, eight, twelve. Twelve. That's one dead death hawk. He's dead. Next death hawk. He's dead. Uh, four, eight. Sixteen. These are a bit rubbish, these Death Hawks. Uh, six, ten. Sixteen. Alright. Uh, one more hit in there. That's a dead Death Hawk. I'll do this one. Six, ten. That's twenty. Alright, well, those are two dead Death Hawks. Two to th turn to three, fourteen. That's a big number. Is that the last one? Is that the last one? No, it's not. You sit down to rest and plan what to do next. As you slump down on the cold stone floor, you inadvertently knock over a glass jar you hadn't seen before, which rolls against the wall and shattered. 
It's like the the, the glass balls in the rock. <laughs> From the bro broken jar, a small man, some 15 centimetres high, <laughs> steps out and walks over to you. This has happened before. Hasn't yeah, this happened there's, before? There's a little Spider-Man, with the spider with a man's face. It was a complete prick. In one of the other books, yeah, yeah. He looks up, you, up at you with his hands on his hips and in a barely audible voice says, Thank you very much. I've been trapped in that infernal jar for the last hundred years. How can I repay you? You can ask the whereabouts of Zambar Bone, or you can ask him to heal your wounds. Where's Zanzar Bone? Zanzar Bone, mate. Let's do that one. Two, three, four, then. Uh, oh, too far. Two, three, four. I'm the tiny man smiles and says, Ah, oh, well, if that's all you want, that's simple enough. He's on the fourth floor in the room with the black door. Ah. Oh! Jocelyn was right. Paint it black. Then he waves his arms at you and disappears into a small puff of smoke. You stand up and walk back. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't... Who knows? The jar was obviously mystically imbued with, you know, imprisoning little people powers. You walk back down the stairs where there are two doors adjacent to each other. You breathe in deeply and turn the handle of the black door. 96. Yep, you are You are indeed correct, Jocelyn. I see a door and I want to paint it black. You open the door and enter a room which is adorned with macabre objects and paintings. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> a black cat is sitting in, fr in front of a table covered in black cloth. Two black candles are burning on either side of a mirror on the far wall. On the table lies an open chest containing a gold skull. Will you walk over to the chest? Close the door and open the white door. Close the door and walk back to the staircase. Well, well you got to walk to the chest, haven't you? Oh, yeah, you've got to walk to yeah. the chest. 257. Okay. Uh, if you are wearing the old boots... To... <laughs> oh, fuck off. No way does it say that. <laughs> it doesn't say that. If you're, wearing... <laughs> if you're wearing the ring of the golden eye, turn to 385. If not, turn to 70. You don't have the ring of the golden eye, do you? No. No one said anything about no rings of golden eyes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Right. As you reach the chest, it disappears before your eyes. You hear laughter behind you and suddenly see in the mirror the hideous reflection of a black-robed skeleton with green, translucent eyes wearing a golden crown on its skull. You spin round, but it is too late. Zambar bone skeletal figure, fingers are touching your flesh and draining your life away. You are now one of his undead servants. You fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you needed a golden ring of Mm, do hickey my jig. Ring of eyes. You needed some. Oh, hang on. I've just pressed the button there by accident. Uh, yes, apparently you needed some golden ring of a thing that nobody told you about. No. <laughs> That's what just a disappointment. <laughs> that is classic fighting fantasy politics. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard's got a tattoo of a flipping unicorn on his forehead, and now he's an undead zombie. I don't, mate. I don't... <laughs> yeah, look at Javi. Like what? Ten quid. The, the ring was in the, <laughs> the boots. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I mean.